Mixer has decided to stop. Also, the Rebel logo stop. That's annoying. Why is the Rebel Somebody logo Somebody called the Rebel Playoffs the highest quality Blood Bowl streams going. I don't know why. A little earlier. I don't know why. Yeah, the Mixer died, is what it was. And now the, um, the Rebel Live logo has died. So that's fun. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> <laughs> dead. Call it off. We're done. Yeah. I don't know if I can. There we go. Got it working. Got him. Right. Hello, Rebel. <laughs> We're dead organized. Um, uh, can you hear everyone? Is everyone's volumes good? We have. Superfed's got a dog. I, I feel do. like I feel like that's it's a little. Actually, bit... <laughs> it's it's Dobby from uh, the Harry Potter series of movies. He does look a little bit like him, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Sorry we were a little bit late starting, but because Harringzod wouldn't get on camera, I couldn't fix the layout. Because I basically had to, to roll a, the dice and gamble that we'd be in the same positions as we were last playoff show. And we're not. I was entertaining the public, Metal. I was I was up in the top left the last time, and I'm not anymore, so there's that. Also, my t-shirt's backwards, because that's how Discord works, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but at least I'm wearing mine. Funny, Stern looks at everybody else. In the wash. <laughs> I'm wearing my blue G Man colours. Is there any, is it? Right. So, anyway, if you don't know us, I am, of course, Full Metal. Uh, I'm the host of this uh, train wreck of a show. We're joined by him, that's Crusader. Hi, Crusader. He is oh. ostensibly the Big O's expert. That being said, um, like, whether he's going to be any good at it this time. He was terrible. You were terrible last time. You were. Is he? Are you even speaking? Are you gonna gonna talk at this point, Crusader? I guess not. All right. Okay. We've got Superfed, <laughs> who's from Rel, and he's Hello. actually he's actually quite good at defending his um his region. Uh, Just not good at playing the game anymore. No, well, no. You you you. I think you've been hurt by uh by picking a race that is actually terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> it. I was laughing at Crusader, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we tend to do that a lot. I mean, I just... Anyway, and finally we've got Harringzord over there, who is Harringzord. Hello. He, or Eddie Redman, one of the two. Yeah, whichever you prefer. Uh, how do you feel about the lack of face fuzz? Well, we've already determined that we think, like, Superfed through me to Crusader is like the evolution of, of a ginger. It just gets more and more ginger. If, we start, if we're in a line of three, we'd... we'd would just be the same person, but more and more ginger across the line. I don't uh, know what that makes. Also, me. a receding hairline, just a little bit, a <laughs> little bit, and then a little bit more. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> just great gradating degrees of forehead. Should yeah. we talk about some blood bowl? <laughs> oh my word, Zinge with the tier two sub. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Tier two. That means you get the chainsaw. Not the dog, though. You do not get the dog. Uh, but thank you, mate. That's awesome. Very much appreciated. Shall we talk about some playoff matches? Indeed. Right, because I've got... Look at this, right? I don't know if you guys have got the stream open, but I changed it a bit last time because everyone was going, where's the playoff bracket? So there's a playoff bracket. Well, at least one of it. That's the wrong side. Hang on, we're on the top left. That one. Yay! That's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, yes, there you go. Look at that. So now oh, we right. can, like... Right. Talk about like the playoff brackets and actually see who's who and, and where they Wait, are. Have you have you prepared for this? I know, right? Like, what the hell? I... <laughs> um, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think any of us were prepared for that. No. Somebody's really uh, excited about the playoffs. She is. I mean, she's she's excited. Right. I mean, I think she I means it's because I get to leave her alone for like six weeks while I cast some games. <laughs> So she's quite excited. She reads some books and stuff. <laughs> okay, apparently the cat attacked her. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, did you throw a spider at her again? My god, Crusader's alive. Hello, Crusader. Hello, chap. Are you, are you okay there? Are you, have you decided to finally cur curse us with your presence? I mean, it's pretty late where he is, to be fair. It's like three no, in the it's, morning. I think. It's early at this point. It's like four a.m. It's quarter past four. Yeah, it's worthy of note. Some of the bracket might not be a hundred percent. It is. It is actually clipped from Schleiss's bracket as of ten minutes ago on Nuffletics, so it might not have fully updated yet. Um, 
But if you want to see the full bracket, you can go to Nuffletics. Does anyone have a link in chat? I'm sure someone can hook us up. Um, but we're going to start at the beginning, and the beginning is Bleeding Hippie. Hmm. Because uh, he's got to buy. Because he killed Shawn Man today, and he won G-Man 1. The good news is that it, this is going to be really short, because we're doing Hippie first, and we're pretty much <laughs> done after that. <laughs> yeah. Hippie, Hippie is, is very strong, and he's likely to win this corner of the bracket quite a lot. Nuflitics. Nuflitics is Slice's website. Uh, it's linked by Superfed, just above you. And if you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. It's kind of like the counterpart to um, to Rebel.net. It is not Nuflitics. That is not how it's pronounced. I know the <laughs> same people that are trying to hijack the Super Bowl or Superb Owl are trying to call it the Magnum Cup. They're also now trying to call Nuffalytics Nuffalytics. So, Harrington. So, I'm just going to get in front of that right now. <laughs> Thank you, Fed. Thank you. <laughs> Harrington, do you want to talk to us about about this team? Because you are, of course, the G-Man expert, so you should know everything there is to know about I mean, team. do you like Claw Mighty Blow? Uh, Hippie does. Yeah, because they've got plenty of it. Um, one, two, three, four Claw Mighty Blow blockers. Um, two of them have piling on. You've got a standard POM with guard and stand firm. You've got a Sneezy the third who's just guard, which is really useless on this team, isn't it? I think he died. Um, yeah. Two Agi 4 Hobgoblins, including the Huntsman 2, who, when he rolled a level earlier, Hippie said, oh, that there is no skill that I want on that player. So, I mean, it's a nice problem to have, isn't it? Um, and your ball sentinels are both Blodge, one of which is Frenzy. Both have Break Tackle, Juggernaut, and this is as near as damn it a perfect Chaos team, Chaos Dwarf team. I'm sorry, as you're going to see. Yeah. To be fair, the 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 guard guy I just looked, he has he died in the second game of the season, I believe, or he might have died in the game against me. I can't remember, but needless to say, he hasn't even played the full season in G-Man One, which is why he's only got guard. So give him like next season, he'll probably have Claw Mighty Blow. It's a really good team. It's a ridiculously strong team. I beat this team in the first game of the season. Oh, well done, you. I've also ticketed that team, because guess what? The, the tickets I've, are out. I'm, I'm building the bracket. Well, not the bracket, because I need teams in there. But tickets are going out while they're doing this, right? Because I'm organised. Right. The next one is actually... It's all kind of in Superfed's yard, the next one. Because it's Rel versus Rel currently on the bracket. Interesting. Um, this one, they, they get a buy, so Bleeding Hippie will will see in round two, which starts October 10th. Um, the next one is Daffo versus Fiction. Now, I know Fiction's in Rel 1. I say, how are we just going to do the thing where we go by what's here and not necessarily what's. Uh, I know likely. Fiction has a chance of being kicked out. I just brought the, the leaderboard up in Rel 1. <laughs> Um, has a chance. There's like eight teams who could finish in that position. <laughs> yeah, Lumi's desperately gunning right now for uh, as many touchdowns as humanly possible to try and <laughs> to try and push him into that spot and kick Fiction out. But it's it's very very tight. But we think I think we should kind of just go with what's there because that's all we've really got to work with. All right, that's fair enough. So, um, so first up, we have uh, frosting and filling. I was hoping um, we'd start with Fiction because they're the one on my screen. Oh. Well, fine, nah. I guess we'll go to the second team on the list there, which would be Gloom and Zoom. I'm the horse, damn it! It's my show! <laughs> Sorry. Ugh. Gloom and Zoom. <laughs> Gloom and Zoom are a little less gloomy and a little less zoomy compared to prior seasons. I would uh, argue they're they... probably more gloomy, surely. They've been bad. <laughs> this, is, this is a bit That's of a banged-up team. I'd be pretty sure about that. Uh, they're not as strong as they were in the sense of they don't have, you know, currently, uh, they don't have two big strength four werewolves. Um, but that doesn't mean that they are, you know, not going to have strength ups elsewhere on the team. They've uh, picked up a couple acquisitions here. So uh, the golems, of course, are looking good. Uh, they do have a agi bust, but nobody cares about that, and a movement bust. On sluggish or horror, -er. um, so he, he loves name. making it easy for us to cast, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the whites are a little bit uh, sluggish and not so zoomy as well. 
Um, both losing movements, and I believe one of them is nickel too. Let me double check really quick. Uh, it's worthy of note. Something that actually made me a little bit sick uh, was that Catatonia momentum legend, level to legend recently, and Fiction was going. Can someone confirm this match for me, please? Because I need to roll plus strength on him. And then he rolled plus strength <laughs> on him. Yeah. It's it's mandated uh, somewhere in the code that Gloom and Zoom must have four, four strength, four players at all times. Uh, there's not a lot I can do to because of the scaling of the team to really zoom it in anymore, I'm afraid. Otherwise, it just kind of takes up... It, it's the Blood Bowl client. There's not so it's Gloom and Zoom, but we can't zoom. Yeah. <laughs> This, as I said, the, the best I can do is is kind of if you make it full screen, the, the best you can really do. Or you can look through Rebel.net or Netflix because uh, they have both have links to all of the teams. Unfortunately, I'd have to cut something off. The biggest difference between this team this season and what you know anyone that hasn't been in Rel would notice is that uh, the ghouls are really really fresh. Um, he had a strength four, Agi four one prior uh, he said rackle ones uh these ones are really really fresh as well as he's leveling up a wolf um so there are fewer key positionals to the team than there have been in prior seasons right and his opponent you mentioned uh is a guy called daffo at the moment isn't it daffo 97 I it is where's he from i know it's uh, Rell, but i don't know where Rell. it's the bottom one it's the bottom return and division so is it nine yes it would be nine uh, and he came in partway through last season uh, I, as a late addition. Uh, I play with Daffo in the another league, the BBPN, so I know him from around. But uh, I believe he came over because he followed yeah. Kalisti and me. But why does the, um, why does the Division Nine Swiss not work as a as a thing to look at in client? Because it's complicated. Oh, I remember. Yeah, it's the one with the the bunch of different rooms in it. So it's also why it doesn't show up on Rebel.net. Yeah, does anyone know what yeah. room is in? <laughs> Uh, no. I also don't know if he's still leading the division or not. The last I checked, it was actually a tie at the top of the table. Oh, great. All right. Give us technical difficulties. We'll be with you in just a second. <laughs> I know where I can find him. It's fine. What's his team? The Frosting and filling. The Norse. So it's Swiss round four, week four, I believe. There he is. No, he's not in that one. Oh, gosh. He's a bit... I found him. It's fine. I found him. It's. Uh, I just went to the original nine before we hit the Swiss. And it uh, team he... still shows up there. He had a very dominant uh, regular season, if we want to call that pre-Swiss, um, where he was a, a top coach by a long shot. And then after that, uh, he okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> he uh, didn't do so well in the Swiss, uh, amazingly enough. And so it's opened the door up for the second place team to come through. But uh, I'm going to assume that he does go ahead and end up taking this, um, even though he's a little bit more banged up. It is quite a nice looking team, although it does he does look... It's unusual to me that he hasn't gone for the traditional piling on on the Berserkers. Mm -hmm. Viking Cop School of Thought, maybe? There's some of that. Um, you know, if you're on the ground, you can't uh, be screening off or anything. Um, he is with the Blodge Strength Up one as well in Guard. Um, it's, it's useful, but not in the traditional sense. It's not about the removal. It'll get removals because it's got Mighty Blow. Uh, but it's more about the positioning and just pitch control. Yeah, um, and the five frenzy, one of them having juggernaut, one of them, be three of them being strength four, and one of them being yeah. strength five is probably pretty good at pitch control as well, right? Absolutely, and jugs, so he's playing the surf game. Let's have a quick look. If he does, uh... he's got uh, fourteen surfs that he's inflicted this season. He does That's have actually really strong. Stand. Yeah, he does have the beer stand as well, so it's quite good at surfing. Yeah. It's almost like it's uh, the Andy Davo style of Norse. But can this team beat Fiction? Probably not. Probably well, not. What do we thought, fellas? Is, is this a Fiction game, or is this a Daffo? Is this Daffo going to take? He's a bit new, isn't he, still? He's only two seasons old. Fiction's been around forever. So. He's getting 300 in inducements, which actually isn't that much compared to what Fiction usually gives up. So I would say that it's, it's going to be, you know, a wizard and maybe a couple babes. And that's about it. Crusader, how are you yeah. feeling? Are you feeling Norse? Are you feeling alive? <laughs> Hello. Um, just having a quick look at the both teams again. Uh, 
I think the North team will have a lot of work ahead of them if they want to take the win. But, I mean, with all the injuries, you know, sustained on uh, Fiction's team, I, I might go for the underdog here. I might go for the North. If he gets to play his control game um, and doesn't get just removed, then he's got a good shot to win for sure. Because um, that's probably arguably the weakest part of Fiction's game. And he has control. Fiction has never won a playoff. Yeah, he's never won the finals. He's never been a rebel champ. He's made it deep a couple times. He's made it deep, but he's never been it all semi the way. semi finals last season where he lost to Bleeding Hippie. Mm -hmm. The MNGs aren't an issue, uh, gentlemen, because of course we do give a ticket out to recover MNGs. Uh, before the playoffs start, so everyone goes in at absolute full strength. So don't worry about the Yeti. Yeah. The Yeti will be back. Yeah, I, I just, I can't help but look at these two teams and just look at the injuries that uh, Fiction is currently nursing and think that I think the, I think, I think the Norse here might be in with a bit of a chance. Fiction is greatly diminished over previous seasons, to be fair. Right. The next one, we're dropping on down to the Big O. Uh, for the next bracket, which is this one is looks to be Big O versus Ariel, and we've got Jip and his doomed witches, which Crusader should tell us all about. Crusader, yeah, no, the doomed witches are currently sitting on eight, one, and three with twelve games played. Uh, which, funnily enough, they're also in with a shot to take first place, so it could change. But here we are. Uh, I believe they're currently sitting at about twenty-one forty TV value right now. And uh, if you can see it on screen, it's pretty obvious why. Because we've got <laughs> what, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, blood step pieces. We've got a couple of guard pieces there, some mighty blow. We've got a fen you know just a phenomenal team here. The uh, these bloody uh, witch elves and, and the blitzes that Jape have just put in a shift every game he plays in. He and he's is... a man who is quite capable of just stealing that ball out of nowhere. He is a very aggressive dark elf coach, isn't he? he... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> he doesn't. He takes his chances. He'll take those calculated odds, and you know he'll. With the light sidestep, he's just so difficult to basically push around and say, "Nah, you ain't beating me." And I mean, qualifying as an elf team through Big O one isn't a small achievement either. To be fair to him, I mean, you know, surviving a game against Papa Nasty when you're an elf team is is something. <laughs> it's pretty much yeah. by itself, right? <laughs> I mean, let's just have a quick look at his preview. I'm actually just looking at Rebel.net, uh, the individual teams, and uh, the Nuffalytics, because it you just click on the names and it brings them up. But, you know, the players he's lost in the past, you know, they've gotten to maybe, maybe what's that, level three at most. And then everything he's currently got at the moment is just, just heading well in the direction of going to Legends, so... He's, yeah, a, he's, he's a great coach to watch, and uh, I, I expect him to put in a good game. He is he is a very entertaining coach to watch, to be fair. He, he, like I say, his aggressive game takes no prisoners. And he's going to have to play uh, uh, maybe a little bit more cautiously, because we're going back to Ariel for the third time uh, already in this show. There's a lot of Ariel in this top bracket. Um, we've got Wedge, who is in Div... Help me out. 10B. 10B. Been beating on me all season. Uh... Maybe. Yes, Wedge's Chorf. So if you don't know Wedge, uh, this is his third or fourth team in the Rebel. Uh, he rolls really, really good teams and then likes to re-roll them. Um, <laughs> so he left a Strength uh, 6 Nurgle Warrior and a Strength 5 Nurgle Warrior on the sidelines and put them in the All-Stars when he re-rolled there. And then his Underworld team also was really good uh, with the Block Troll and re-rolled that to this team. Where he got a movement up bull centaur right away, a blodge bull centaur right away, and a claw and a strength up on blockers. So this is for a one season team. This is a nice looking one season team. To be fair, absolutely, yeah. At sixteen eighty TV, um, he's going to be in decent range. I mean, five hundred TV and inducements is going to give you a lot, just in how much you are able to capitalize on it with bribes. Um. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's Chorf versus Dark Elf. If you get the removals, it looks really good. And a, a, a chat coming through for you as well, Super Fedia, and saying that two of his Chorfs actually died in season, so... Hendy put in a little shift um, in the Swiss 
uh, and his rats were able to just one block, one Kaz um, for about six turns in a row and took out two of the Chorf blockers and so, put that niggle on the uh, claw one. I almost expect, I know how this discussion is going to go, but I'm, I'm guessing, Superfed, you're, you're nominating the Chorfs to win this one. Absolutely. it's He's got enough tackle to beat Jape, and Jape is going to be Jape's own uh, worst enemy in this matchup. He can't help himself but cage dive. Um, <laughs> and against the Chorfs with, you know, enough guard. Um, it's, it's not a good cage dive team. I mean, um, six, which, six blocks there is, is being answered by six tackle, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. So, you know, you've got one for each of them. What do you think, Crusader? I think Jabe's going to win this game. I've been throwing him against Dwarves all clan season. He's been playing Dark Elves, and he keeps putting up good results. I, I mean, if the Dwarves get some good removals, it could be a different story, but, like, he's just faster, he's more agile, he's got the skills he needs. I, I think he's going to take this one down. I mean, the Dwarves... He's been, in... he's, been giving away, he's been giving away so much in inducements all season during the Big One. Div, uh, being during Div One. He's no stranger to it. I think he's fine. I, uh... Yeah, I mean, the Dwarves but, only do have one Claw Mighty Blow. That is a fair point. If this is Wedge's matchup, the thing that he needs to be most careful about is the pace of the game is going to be unlike any other game he's played this season. Uh, because the pace of the game that's set by Jape, and I played Jape so many times in Champ Ladder, um, is very unique. And especially when he's got this much TV, he's going to be throwing a lot at the uh, the Chaos Dwarves, and they're not used to got, being on the back foot. He's got no fear. The right. guy's got no fear, and, and that's going to do him a huge amount of favors here. I think. Wedge just needs to be patient, and if the removals don't come right away, uh, they will eventually. Uh, and then once they do, then you can capitalize. Harringzod, which side does G-Man stand on in, on this in this debate? Who is who is going through? Uh, I mean, obviously, I think this matchup is actually unlikely to happen. Um, because I, agree. I think it's more than likely that Jape will pick up some sort of result to finish ahead of Papanasty. Mm. Um, if this does happen, I think Jape will probably walk through this one quite comfortably. Having only one mighty blow is... A problem if the elves can just hit that thing and keep it on the floor somehow, then it's happy days, isn't it? So the um, the actual truth of the fact is that this might not be Jape, it might be Papa Nasty. Is yeah, uh, potentially Papa Nasty. Yeah, I mean, like, is, and is not. I can tell you that. I can tell you that Wedge is preparing for Papa Nasty. I think. Um, I think that's almost like a booby prize, isn't it? You're like, oh, yay, Dark Elves, I can punch those. And then Papa Nasty shows up and you're like, ooh. <laughs> I mean, Actually, yeah, I if don't... I was Wes, I'd also be looking at, uh, at Papa Nasty here and, you know, going, this is probably likely. I don't think he'd mind facing Ds, with the exception of that Yeti, which we'll come on to in a bit. We're going to see the teams anyway because they're, they're showing up in other parts of the bracket. There's a lot mm. of just moving up and down in positions that may change the thing. So, hang on, if this matchup does happen... Are you giving it to the, the Dark Elves then, I take it? Oh, yeah, if this one happens, it's Jake's game. Yeah. Okay, that, that's fair. Right, we're finally going to go over to uh, to talk about one of the G-Man teams in a, in a world where they actually have an opponent. Oh, God, right, what? Uh, we're looking uh, a perennial Div 2 member. He's been around a bit now. He, he took a season off because apparently he's working on some very popular video game. Um, that actually did really, really well on, on Kickstarter. Back it if you haven't. Uh, give him some money. The man is awesome. I'm a huge fan of Zinj. Uh, he also built a really co couple of really cool things for the Rebel Rabble, and he's got a stupid Minotaur. Take it yeah, away, we, need to talk, we need to talk about the Minotaur, <laughs> don't we? Uh, <laughs> so, Unf, uh, who you might remember from the Superstar shootout last season, he captained the Chaos, the Chaotic Player Pact team. Um, so Unf is originally Singe's Minotaur. When Singe took a season off, he loaned him to Drace and his Chaos team, Fiastars. At which point, after that season was over and Singe came back, he bought the Minotaur back. Didn't, didn't, under his tenure with Drace, didn't he also get his neck broken at some yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't leave your toys with Drace. Uh, <laughs> 
I think he also picked up guard and tentacles in that season, though. So, you know, that's all right. Random boy, your your match is literally updated to be you on. I've got enough links open on my iPad in front of me, and it's actually updated to be you, even though it isn't on the bracket in the thing because of tw- as of twenty minutes ago. It wasn't you, and now it is. So it's, all, it's always about random boy, isn't it? You're making it about himself. We're talking about Zinj right now. Mm, yeah. You're random boy. <laughs> it's a nice... All right, as far as Minotaurs go, I actually think this is pretty good. It's got blocks, so it's kind of more reliable. It's got claw, so it does lots of damage. We expect claw, we expect tentacles. I like... Minotaurs are one of the few players I like the armor up on, because they can do that roadblock armor value tentacles job. Mm. Um... Right, real quick before we go any further, Lumi just won five one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's Lumi. Lumi. We can go that. back to that fiction prediction and the, uh... the fiction prediction. <laughs> I'm gonna go really, ahead and really say does. that Lumi is more likely than fiction to get that seed. And if he it does, can... that's a whole different world, isn't it? Fiction plays Sace, right? So if Sace's Chaos Warriors just wreck that Necro team, he has sideways. to win by one touchdown. Yeah, if Sace wins the game, then Fiction is not going. That'll yeah. be a whole other world of, of interest. And anyway, anyway, right? Yeah, that's a great Minotaur. Uh, we're back on topic. There's a lot of other killers on this team. Hangs on, keep going. Carry on. I just I, inter- I had to interrupt oh, because the Lumi God, yeah, there, was massive. There's a remainder of that team, isn't there? Yeah, he has, um, he has the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've got Chaos Warriors with uh, we've got a Claw Might Blow one with block and guard and tackle, which is yeah, great. That's that's lo- looking lovely, isn't it? It's uh, nice, one isn't of them. It? One of them just has block, but he's new. Earth died and was reborn. Um, and then we've got two block guard. Mighty Blow, and one has Tackle, one has an Injury, which is an Agility Bust, but you, you don't really care. His job is to stand there and hit things and help people hit things. Um, now that MNG will be back, and that's the the sort of killer. It, it's a killer, but it also has Guard. Me if you want to live. Um, okay, just to interrupt you, as everyone's heard the sound effects going off, Sis just cheered 15 bits to say he's officially locked, baby. The curse has finally been broken. He is no longer the bridesmaid, and he is now the bride. I added that bit myself. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Harry's added it on the on the player nominations as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Lumi, thank great. you for the horse, mate. Congratulations on what was uh, not looking like it was going to be a five-one at half time. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's great watching Lumi play when he just throws those rats at a wall. Yeah, there was someone came into the into the chat and went. I, I gotta be honest, I'm I've my first time watching you. I'm not sure I like how how unsafe. I'm not sure I, I like your strategy here. And Lumi just went, yeah, but I've got to win by like tons of touchdowns, so I'm doing it. <laughs> it was really good. Anyway, we're talking about Zinge. We keep we keep coming off Zinge. <laughs> um, yeah. So the killer will be back. The killer, obviously, I don't think was originally a killer, but there was probably a different killer. So we just had to turn this guard player into that. Um, I, I mean, guard is, is super good. Guard is really strong. Of course it is, so. yeah. Um, and then we've got a, another mighty blow guard player. And then a, a tackle, dive and tackle, which is nice. I like I like uh, Acedia, I, I would pronounce it. It's different, but it's kind of useful. I like the utility on Chaos. Then the ball carrier, Lil Lunf. Uh, he is, uh, he's got, well, he's got two heads, the weirdo. And Bludge and Agi4, which makes him quite good. He doesn't have sure hands, though, which could be problematic if he was he, to ever I want to correct you right here. He doesn't have two heads. He has foul appearance. That's foul oh, appearance. I can't see that. That's really small. Yeah, that looked yeah. like two heads. Okay, that's a weird choice. Right? Um, <laughs> no, no, actually, right. It's, it's, it's genuinely when my ball carrier on my Nurgle team gets to legend, it's genuinely something I'm looking at as well. Because, he's not legend. I know, I'm saying, but when my... He doesn't have sure hands. I know, he doesn't I... have sure hands, and he's possibly, except he's not, but he might face Jape. I'm not saying I like it on this pick. I'm saying I like it eventually on a Chaos Carrier. I'm just have not saying seen, I like it yet. Have you seen what a Beastman looks like with Foul Appearance? Yeah, they're on fire. It's mm. pretty cool. That, that part's cool. <laughs> that. People are going, I'm not hitting him. He's on fire. <laughs> anyway. He doesn't have sure hands, though. It's... Um, and as much as I don't... It, you know what I think that player is going to be? I think he's going to be the all-apple pies of picking up the ball. 
See, I don't. <laughs> I think agree. He is. I agree. With that. I don't think he is because <laughs> because we uh, are seeing someone who I genuinely was quite surprised to see turn up in. Um... Oh no, it's not. It's just the the file appearance is the is the stink, isn't it? It just kind of goes. Pfft. It's like gas. Maybe maybe it's just a presence where they're on fire. It's just so different. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Kirkengrad from Ariel. I don't know which Ariel he's from, but Kirkengrad uh, is to play. It's going to be Ariel 7. And it's either Kirkengrad or Tommy Tuzal, who we will cover later, but that's a Nurgle team. So it's either Lizards or Nurgle. Um, None of them I think have played yet. <laughs> it might be the Wood Elves. The Wood Elves can still make it. Wow. That's not difficult. <laughs> I'm sure Zinj is wanting the lizards. Let I me just put it that way. <laughs> uh, when you're just stack Mighty Blow and uh, a couple Claw, you definitely want the lizards. So shall we assume uh, it's going to be the lizards just because I think Kirk will hit fighting all that Claw? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so taking a look at Kirk and Grad's team, the Mesozoic Mighty Men. Uh, they were close to the playoffs last season and their rookie season. Um, and they did pretty well again this season. Um They've got uh, Ankylosaurus Andy, which is a, just a standard soar, uh, Croxagore with guard and stand firm. Uh, Stegosaurus Steve is a source worth taking note of. Strength 5 with block. Uh, they've got a block break tackle tackle Triceratops Terry, who's a pretty good uh, safety if you want. And uh, they've got a couple, another, another tackle piece. They've only got one mighty blow, which uh, the new the new age next generation of lizard coaches are, are pretty happy with one mighty blow piece and not piling on. Um, I'm speaking of the Shadora generation. I kind of like it more, you know. I, I I think lizards do work much better as a control team. And this whole, I have to put mighty blow on everything, is kind of like... Mm, that's just What's not the old generation? Thing. And they've all re-rolled. I mean, 130 re-rolled, Grizzoot re-rolled. All those old school lizard palm coaches are gone. Um, so it's, I think, I think we've seen which one stood the test of time. It's also worthy of note that at once upon a time near the beginning of the season, uh, Kirkengrad felt like he might need to re-roll this team because it got so beaten up in its first couple of games. Bounce back, <laughs> almost made playoffs. And then I'm really, almost made I'm really again. glad that I held my ground there and said that, no, this is not an angel of Lilith rule team. Um, because they really did turn it around. Yeah, they've turned it around hard. It's, it's they've come out really nice. I think lizards are notoriously difficult to level. Right? Saurus, what I will Saurus say, the team that put him in that position is the team that he is playing week thirteen to determine whether or not he gets this seed. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be fun. That's I'm sure I, I he's like really a, looking forward to that. I do like a good old salty run back, right? Um, yeah, I was going to say grudge match, but salty run back works. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit of a fighting both. game aficionado as well, and it's it's definitely a, a term from there. Mm. Right, moving on. Well, not so much moving on yet because we need to talk about who's going to win. Who who's going to win? Is it going to be Chaos Claw or is it going to be Lizard Control? Cake having not done as well against the Claw, uh, I don't think he's figured out the best way to do that. And then when he does, I think every other Lizard coach would like to know the answer. Um, but here's how it's, uh, utilizing the skinks, keeping the, the ball as far away from the chaos as possible, um, and being willing to sacrifice your Saurus. And if he's able to do that, then he can get the win. Uh, he's got a great, great skink, Velociraptor Vinny with, uh, Blod, Sure Hands, and a movement up. Basically every skill that you would want on a skink, he's got on this skink. So he's got, and then all the other skinks are nice and trim, so he'll get some inducements as well. And as as chat pointing out, Kirk does use the power of bitching to pull out wins. I mean, if <laughs> if you ever get the chance to play Kirk, get you mean him. You the stream? Get him on voice whilst you're playing him, because you you know the the, the anime term Sunder Sunder. I don't know how it's pronounced. T s u n d e r e. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He yeah. is the closest human being I've ever met to that description, ever. Like, something goes wrong, it's like, well, it's not like I wanted that to work, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, streams all he, on that's exactly it, Lurkensy. And all he really misses is the word backer at the end of his sentences, and it'd be set. 
Like. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Lurkins, he says it's pronounced soon de re. I don't Close. know if I just mauled that. Uh, anyway, so do we think Cake's going to win, or do we think. Are you going for Cake, I'm assuming, Fed, because he's your boy, right? Of course. Harringzod, why is Cake not going to win? Because he's playing Chaos. <laughs> How, how many Chaos versus Lizard teams have we seen in the play in the playoffs? And the Chaos team wins every time. Yeah, apart from that time, Hood played Lizards. Mm, no, he that's did lose takes. to the Necro. But that's that's absolutely what it takes, though. Is that when you're playing Lizards against the Claw team, you have to go balls to the wall and let your Saurus die. I mean, Hood also lost to a guy we're going to talk about in a minute, so we'll not talk about that too much. It's <laughs> a very silly game, right? Crusader, as as is the case for G Man versus Rel matchups, we're gonna need you to break the tie. Who's gonna who's gonna win? Is it gonna be the Minotaur or is it gonna be the Minotaur and the boys, or is it gonna be uh the lizards? Fed says skinks. I see one skink. I'll take. Uh and I see a bunch of claw. Hmm. I'm uh, I'm gonna vote chaos here. What would Captain Jack do? Uh, well, I, I, what, what would someone. Captain Jack do? He'd watch the Croxagor die, I think, is the answer to that question. And then I, Lynn. He'd, he'd, be waiting, he'd be waiting for Miraskar to purchase another Croxagor because he had one die recently. Um, the seventh yeah, dead Croxagor there. Really? Another yeah. one's dead? You didn't see this? Seventh Croxagor but, uh, last, last week in Big O, his seventh Croxagor yeah. died. <laughs> <laughs> The only, the only meme that's worse than that is Arch XL's uh, throwers. I think he's on number nine. Oh wow! Yeah, no, but but the thing is, Arch XL's throwers are high elves, so you kind of expect it. Sure. You sure. don't so much expect Croxigors to fall over and die in the first game. Every first game. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm gonna back Chaos here. I think I I, I think Cake's got a nice team growing, but they need a little more cooking. Is it? It'd is be a shame it? If something happened to it. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. Yeah, I was going there myself. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Superbird. Right, there's another guy coming from <laughs> Rel 2, actually. Uh, he's in chat. He's been waiting for this moment because it's his five minutes of fame. It's, it's of course, uh, this idiot with the vampires. <laughs> I mean, hey, 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 hey. Random boy's face. I like Random Boy. I wind him up. I just like winding him up, you know. I love your Random Boy. We love his vamps. I do. I really do. Come on, come on. Uh, as if any any intro is needed for this. Uh, please, Harrings, I'll take it away. Right, okay. So, obviously, I think most of us who were around for Season 7 remember this lot. Um, because they... Basically, I think their strategy was to just put the vampires on a diet so that they never bloodlusted ever. Um, and it really worked. They got to the quarterfinals, and then finally the wheels fell off. They are, uh, is it is it Blue Ribboners um, from Terry Pratchett's uh, Discworld universe? The ones that replace their addiction to blood with an addiction to something else, like coffee or taking photos <laughs> or whatever? I, I feel like that's where he's got his vampires from. Yeah, it works for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, well, obviously, Season 8 was a rough one for him. He went into a Black really Rivers. tough division um, and had a bit of a a poor season, finished sort of down in 11th place, I think, in that Division 3 table. But we promoted him up to Division 2 anyway, just based on number of rerolls. And because and... we kind of felt like he had more to give than he was showing, I think. No, it was just not yeah, a rerolls, yeah. right? Yeah, you've yeah. you got to stick with that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? He's much better than he was two seasons ago as, as a vampire coach. Much better. And you would actually be a bit foolish to underestimate him going really far in this tournament. He's very, very good. It's like, it feels to me like some coaches just need to find that team that gels for them. And mm. they suddenly start performing a lot better when they find a team that suits their mentality and play style. Uh, now, this does come with a sort of asterisk that if you ask most of G-Man 2... I think they've all nominated him, not uh, nominated him for the Luck and Noob Award. Um, <laughs> every single one of them, to a man, has nominated him for that award. 
um, just on the basis that he occasionally, like the game against Philbo today, there was a lot of ones thrown from the Orcs and favorable dice here, there, and everywhere. Um, but it doesn't detract from the fact that the plays that Random Boy makes are the right plays at the right time. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him rock up in the quarterfinals again. I think it's a team that can go somewhere. And the thing with Vamps is you've always got to be very, very careful. Because you've you've got this really well put together cage and you're protected and you've got layers of defence and then suddenly half of your team stop stop paying attention and start drooling on the floor because some vampire lay down and went paint me like your French little ladies or something. And uh Yeah. It's it's a good looking team, and there's an AG five, there's five of them, four of them have blodge, two of them have blodge so two of those four have blodge step, one of them's got block. Tackle Mighty Blow. Three of them have Pro as well. I mean, his vamps are super developed. His his thralls are dirt, to be fair, but mm. who cares? Well, he does have, thralls, right? Oh, he did have one of the worst dirty players in the game um, <laughs> in Justin Bieber, who just got sent off every single time without breaking armor. I always um, feel like that's why he, fi- he fired him rather than let him die. I also enjoy the, the naming theme of things that are sort of annoying or drain the life out of you and You've also got Count Vladimir Rasputin there. I, I love um, the fact that he's got himself on his team. Stuff that is annoying, <laughs> and he's put himself on the team. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice self-deprecating sense of humour. And there's, there's Father um, Hypevid, and then, of course, there was also, famously, the one he hired for the round after the Hypevid. Father Hypevid was hired for the round that he was playing for the Hype video. The He got the Hype video, and then he named one after you. Mm. Oh, I said High Harringzord, I think it was called, and it instantly died. Mm. <laughs> It didn't finish the first game it took to the pitch, which we've noticed as a as a problem within Rebel, is if you name a play after Harringzord, it's probably not going to have the longest duration. The longest innings. It's killed by a rock, right? Right. Now, we're going down to the big O for his opponent, and I don't know this, this coach at all, so you're going to have to help me out here, Crusader. Yeah, look, I'll be honest. Um, divisions 4A and 4B, I've not exactly kept up to touch with... Um, but as I understand it, Kevin with his Orcs, he's a one-season team. He's gone nine, two, and one with a game to sp- uh, with another game to go. Got plus thirteen touchdown difference too with these Orcs. That's pretty so damn he's, good. He's yeah, he's done quite well. Uh, the name keeps his name keeps coming up in the circle. So you know, it's good to see that he's made the playoffs. Uh, having a look at his team, we've got well, we've got three Black Orcs that have got levels. One of which has got block and guard. Two of which have block, which is fairly standard. Uh, then the Blitzers, we got Block, because they start with that. Mighty Blow and Agility increase on one of them. Uh, Mighty Blow tackle, tackle and guard on the other one. Uh, Blitzer with plus Agility, Dodge and Fend. He's got the thrower, because it seems to be the standard thing to do. No standard strength on the thrower, though, so that's unfortunate. And a Block lineman. Um, this so is yeah, it. This just in. Sorry, easy. sorry to interrupt, but Liscaris apparently has a thing for Young Orcs. Young Aussie Orcs, uh, Liscaris is a uh, thing. Well, it's their own. Yeah, whatever floats your boat, man. Is that yeah. just a picture of Superfed? No, Superfed's staying out of this discussion, Rex Long. <laughs> because it's Big O versus G, man. He will become much more animated as soon as we talk about a rel coach. Right, <laughs> Crusader, what can uh, what can this team do against such... He's got a lot of money in the bank as well, actually, so he can drop his team yeah, by another 100k. Yeah, I, he's on 12 players now. He could pick up an extra you can go to 13 players and just start fouling with impunity um but what can he do against those vampires well i mean this is the thing right like i i like to say that i'm fair and honest when it comes to it i think random boy wins this game um i think it'll be a combination of experience from random boy and just solid vampires realistically uh, that being said, if the vampires start removing their own players, it'll be a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle for him. But um, I just I, I feel I like, like this cabin do well. I think Random Boy just wins the game. I feel like this is one that we've kind of tossed, uh, tossed a bit of a, a young blood to the wolves here a little bit. I, I, Haring's odd. I'm sure you probably agree with that line as well, right? Well, I've literally just cast um, random guy beating an orc team that's more developed than this. More developed, um, but weirdly developed. Yeah, uh, yeah it's filled with team metal, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I, I mean, would let's, say... let's be honest. Just to sorry, you're fed, but quickly, Philbo not necessarily a playoff capable coach. No offense to Philbo, lovely guy, genuine pleasure to play. 
but he's mental. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this work team... So, yeah, I was going to say the same thing, that you know, had I not just watched Random Boy terrorize an orc team... Um, it did tab- It did really point out to me, though, what this is going to look like. And most likely, with this coming in from a fresh coach that we're not very familiar with, unless you've experienced vampires played at a high level with a lot of skills, you are not prepared for it. And my suspicion is that uh, this orc team is going to think that a cage with a couple pieces of guard is going to be enough. And it's really not. I mean, and, it is uh, until the hypno gear starts coming in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I have no doubt, and there's no, there's going to be no shortage of like advice coming from some of the bigger names and the big O for the, uh, for the new coach. So I mean, like he'll be aware of hypnotic gaze and he'll be aware of the dangers there. I it just like, as much as I would like to say that you know big O is going to walk away with the win here. Uh, realistically, I think random boys vampires, unless the ones come out in massive force. Are probably going to take this game. Basically, Indeed. you're saying if he, if unless he fails all of the bloodlusts that he never failed through the season, right? Yeah, pretty much. Or well, I mean, like, there's always the possibility too that the orcs remove a bunch of thralls and then the vampires start feeding on them too, which doesn't help matters. But he, it basically has to be that random boys down to vampires on the pitch alone, and that is a world I can see the orcs winning. But at this point in time, uh, I think that. Cavan, and I probably butchered his name as well, has a uh, a good, solid start to his Orc team, and I think there'll be a lot more to come in the future. I mean, hangs on. Again, as, as the G-Man expert, the one thing I suppose Cavern has going for him is that Random Boy isn't going to murder his team. Right? Well, he's got 250k in the bank. Um, if he can buy off a couple of the vampires, <laughs> then that'd be a start, right? But his best strategy is to whack Thralls. Ignore the vampires essentially, just whack the thralls as much as you can. Yeah. 100% agree. But it needs removals quickly. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that it's fair for the for the Aussie guys to get up in arms against uh, against Crusader for not backing this Orc team. It's just a bit too young. It would it would as, have as, to pull out some miracles. On the they team. don't even have a piling on piece. Like it's not even really. I mean, they might. After the random boy game, is twenty nine out of thirty one there? Unless he hasn't played this week, in which case he As, really should. No, he's, he's still got one game left up his sleeve. Okay. Um, so and, and I'm pretty sure he's a guaranteed lock. Um, but as I said, like I like to be fair and honest about things, and I think, in all fairness and all honesty, I think everybody who looks at these two matches, looks at these two teams, can go, yeah, the vampires probably walk away with a win here. As much as much as it pains to say it against one of my uh, fellow Big O coaches, I just got to be honest. That's fair. That's fair. We're going back over to Superfed and Rel for the next one, so you're gonna have to guide me again because I do not know these divisions so much. It's looking to be Michaels and his Neko, which is no stranger to the uh, playoff race, is it, Superfed? It's not. Uh, <laughs> Michaels is coming to us from Rel Two, um, and uh, even uh, was on my recaps at one point because uh, you know Rumblebee, Rumblebee. Um, but uh, yes, he was a playoff coach in his first season. He took on Papa Nasty in a highly disputed game uh, <laughs> that ended in a quad skull that very, very <laughs> nearly could have been Papa Nasty being upset by a one season. That title. was it, was literally this close, wasn't it? It was, I think Papa Nasty himself must have like not breathed for the entire turn, and then the quad skull comes in and was like, I can breathe again. <laughs> Now I remember this game. <laughs> yes. Now, yeah. here's where I picked on him then. I pick on him now. I will continue to pick on him. This is a Necro team that is very, very concerned about the bloodstains on their shoes. They want their shoes immaculate. They don't want to foul anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Necro, in my opinion, are really good at the fouling game. So to neglect that and still do as well as he does is impressive. I mean, he doesn't uh, like, have particularly developed zombies, does he now? I mean, he's got a wrestle guy, and he's got a guard block guy, but that's it. There's no dirty players in there. There's one at five out of six. He doesn't He doesn't even really select dirty player um, when he does have levels. He's lost some players, but you can look at his uh, previous players there. You see he lost a block fend zombie, a kick wrestle fend zombie, 
a wrestle zombie, a wrestle guard zombie. He does not get dirty play. He also doesn't seem to get mighty blow on his wolves, which is a little bit upsetting for him. It's definitely the exception, but it's like I said, it's just not the traditional necro game. He plays it very differently. Um, he does have thirteen surfs, that is sizable. Um, He's so got he does play the sideline very game. Very good ghoul, apart from the fact that it's plus movement, minus movement. But the IG four is nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's it's <laughs> an elf. Oh, Crusade loves when they these plus stat free <laughs> stick minus stats. Now the thing is, right? He's he's clearly he doesn't need the dirty player. It's not like he's about to go into a match potentially against a uh, damage racing opponent, right? Harringzard. <laughs> uh, I see what you've done there. And it's clever. It's chaos. It's chaos. Where yeah. is he? Where's where's the chaos from, Harringzard? So it's from G Man Seven. Ooh, it's um, a bit low down. So that's that's good for him, right? It is, but the. Just the show of domination that Blissful Fire has put on in G Man 7 this season has been some. He's miles ahead. I've run into Blissful Fire elsewhere, and he is a very, very good coach. He has been in the playoffs before when he won the Rebel Miners, don't you know? So there's a fun fact for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that was with a Nurgle team, I think, but his Beast of Nurgle died in the Miners final, and he turned up to playoffs with like <laughs> half the team and lost. He rocked, um, up, rocked up with about three Nurgle dudes going, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is cool. Um, but he's back with a good team this time. Um, and yeah, he's he's undefeated. He's got one more game to play in G-Man 7 in the Swiss, but he's eight points ahead of everybody else. Um, and it, it's not like the scariest Chaos team you've ever seen, but there's enough skills there for it to be a big concern for Michaels. Um Two Claw Mighty Blow Warriors, one of which is Claw Pomp and Tackle. Uh, that one didn't even get blocked until its fourth skill. <laughs> Just ignored that entirely. Um, he's got a niggled Chaos Warrior with the, the fairly bog standard block KM Guard, Mighty Blow and Tackle. He's got a Blodge Guard one, which is really nice. And then the, the Ball Carrier, which Singe might want to take a look at because it's got two heads and sure hands as well as Blodge, but that's a very nice ball carrier. Um, standard Claw Mighty Blow, a block tackle, a block guard, a couple of utility wrestles, and then just some rookies. Um, <laughs> it... Fact from the fact from the, the front uh, front lines there, Simon is saying a pro-elf lineman niggled the warrior with a foul. Well, there you go. So he got kicked in the head by an elf and came out the worst for, worse, worse for wear. It's almost like fouling's a good strategy. Right. Not something, <laughs> not something he needs to worry about in this matchup, so... Honestly, if he doesn't foul and he's playing a lot against a lot of claw and he doesn't have any claw mighty blow, what's he gonna do against the Chaos Fed? How's he how does he win this? Outplaying them, uh, in different ways. Uh you would think, you know, this is low division G Man versus high division Rel. Um might be a little bit of a testament to player skill. But uh this is a second season team, I assume. Yes, he's only he been. Is, around. Um, this is he isn't yeah. low division because he's bad, and he's been around right. for ages. He's low division because season. he hasn't had a chance to get time. It's a lot of development for a two season team um, on Chaos, so I definitely respect that. Uh, but I just don't think Michaels is going to leave anything but zombies up against these Claw Mighty Below pieces. He might get one blitz a turn, but he's going to rely entirely on that removal game against a regen team that has a lot of experience against Claw Mighty Below. Uh, Michaels has played against multiple Chorfs, multiple Chaos, Nurgle, all of that, and still come out on top. So he's got experience against the numbers game, and uh, Regen will definitely get him there. So to that, you say, Haringzord? Um, I think I actually agree with everything that Fed said there. Um, I don't think Michaels is anywhere near going to be scared of a couple of Claw Mighty Blow players. Um. I do think Blissful Fire has had a good enough season and he's in a, some good form. He'll have a bit of confidence going to the game um, where he won't be scared, if that makes sense. So he can he can certainly bring his A game. I was going to say, if, if if we're not expecting Michaels to be scared, is it not that then on Blissful Fire to put the fear in him? It, it's one of those, isn't it, where if, if the first six blocks produced four removals and was stupid, then happy days. Um... 
I think there's enough in that. He's got three guard on that Chaos team. That's okay. What I'd suggest is if he can get through a flesh golem early doors, then he'll be in a much stronger position. If he can get one of those things, because presumably, I can't remember Michael's team off the top of my head, but presumably those things will be fairly nice. They are pretty good. They're like level three, I think, or both of them. Maybe level four on one. They were pretty good. Through... Uh, there's, there's one that's on level, uh, level three. Mm -hmm. if, you get, if you get one of them off the field with a claw hit early doors, and then that takes away a lot of the strength and some of the guard as well. It does more okay. allow you to dictate the pace at that point, doesn't it? Mm. That'll it's be all about meaningful removals. If there's no meaningful removals, then I, I you know, I just think that uh, Michaels is going to walk away with it. So, Zod, are you going? Are you backing Fire here, or are you backing Michaels? I will, because I like to pick an upset every now and then. I will tentatively. <laughs> Backfire, but that's <laughs> very much with my G-Man hat on. Crusader, are you going to break this tie in with some insight, or are you just going to sleep? Uh, hello. No, I'm. Uh... Claw Mighty Blow is great. Uh, Regen makes the game a hell of a lot harder for them. I think if Michaels plays his game well and can utilize his wolves and, you know, the ghoul and whatnot, I think he can come out of this one ahead. So, yeah, I'm going to back the uh, Necro here. Ah, that's a fair call. I think it's... I'm excited for this game. I think it's going to be a very interesting game because I know they're both very good coaches. I think of all the games we've seen so far, that's probably the toughest one to call. Yes. Yeah. I, I, as, I think it's credit to both of them. Credits. Yeah, as you both said, it's going to take a lot of removals, meaningful removals. Talking from about credit, the chaos. credit where it's due. Uh, we've got a guy coming back into uh, playoffs for his second time uh, on a Nurgle team. Tell us a bit more about the man, the myth, the meme that is Stoutacus and all apple pies. <laughs> I, I can't do this again. <laughs> <laughs> he he toys me a heart, doesn't he? Where is he from? Grungy what? desserts. Stauticus is a interesting coach. He goes pretty aggressive. His wood elves made well, rebel. Where is fame. he from? Uh, he's R. from Rel Three. Yeah, Rel Three. I don't know Ariel very well anymore. There's too many years now, so yeah, it's it's hard. Hard. that's fine. <laughs> uh, yes, Ariel Three. He's going to be top team from there, um, and he. Had some trials and tribulations throughout the season, but he held together pretty well. Um, All Apple Pies is really not doing his job, but we'll get back to that. But uh, he upset the Sage with his Wood Elves and then found that uh, when you do aggressively leap in every time, it can kill your team and it has team killed. So he went to Nurgle, where his team can't get killed, or so he thinks. Um, <laughs> Apart from that one guy who had a brilliant name and died stupidly fast in his first match, the uh, Man in a Back Lava. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. He was yes. very dead very quickly against Aldar, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, he's tried to replace that character three times, and all three are dead. I like that he's now called Angry Churro. I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so this team has a really solid Nurgle ball carrier, uh, Agi 4, Blodge, two heads, sure hands. So he can actually dive through tackle zones to recover the ball um, fairly reliably. Uh, he's got a frenzy piece with movement up, which is actually also a nice scoring threat. I like uh, that a lot. To score I, I, in a hurry. Movement seven on a frenzy player means that you can sit in the center line on in the center of the pitch and hit both sidelines without GFIs, which is actually mm -hmm. really good. Um, he's got uh, all apple pies, which is now the infamous uh, killer piece that uh, delayed block for a while and it cost him severely last playoffs. So well, he's not going to make that mistake again. He's four SBP away from what I would assume is getting tackle, possibly Palm. He's got a couple other tackle players. Um, and uh, he is agi busted, but still doing the job. Mostly KOs from what I hear. Um, <laughs> whereas the actual brunt work of the removal game is cannoli as you are. Uh, the Nurgle Warrior with block, mighty blow, claw, tackle, and now guard. All Apple Pies um, has to go down in Rebel history as the most disappointing Pestigore ever. Surely. Well, other than your AG5 one trying to pass. Oh, well, that is... Yeah, oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, he's he's, he's the thing, for sure. It's, it's a nice... Um, I mean, how old is this team now? It's... Uh, third season. Third season. So, he's really hitting the stride of development now. And it is it is looking... It's paying off for him. It's looking nice. As a fellow if, Nurgle coach, 
I do like where he's going with a lot of what he's built. If that was a G-Man team, that is going into Division 1 next season. Yes. Ariel's a little different where you guys are a little bit less prone to rerolls. They're a little um, bit older, aren't they? Yeah, but I think that that is ready for a top division crack. Just that team. remember this team when we get near the end because there's a second season Nurgle team that is basically equal to this. Right, Ooh. okay. Thank you very much, Kozix, by the way, for the 200 bits. Very much appreciated. Uh, now, they're going... They're talking about uh, G-Man. Uh, oh, I, you, did, you did miss your coverage. Fiction, if you didn't see the, the Lumi game, you might not just have missed your coverage, but you might also have ended up missing your playoff spot. <laughs> Great. <laughs> not wanting to be BM here, but <laughs> there's a certain a m more than coverage that might have been missed if you haven't seen Lumi's results. Can't get biased playoff cast if you don't make the playoffs. <laughs> Lumi went to town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um... Right, so... Tell us about this team. Turn it down, Wes, I apologise, because that was right. a little bit BM, but... This is 8G we're looking for, Metal. All right, 8G. Uh, it's yeah. Dr. Nick. I know Doctor. I know the name Dr. Nick, but I wasn't sure yeah. where he was from. He's in our streams a lot, and he's a lovely fella. Um, and this is, of all of the G-Man teams I have to back, this is the most difficult one to provide a compelling argument for. Well, especially because he's playing Stauticus, who knows what he's doing in playoffs, right? I mean, this is... Mm. He's no, the experience is there. Right, and this Chaos Dwarf team is not ready for this. They, they are not ready for this, unfortunately. <laughs> Things they are not prepared for. Uh, They're yeah. just not ready <laughs> It's not um, the first undercooked Chorf team we've seen either, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, that That is not going to have a good time against those Nurgle Warriors. Or all apple pies. But he's had, had a good season. He's had a good, he's had a good season, right? I mean, he's got he's had had three bulls. He's had an interesting season where he was very much lower mid-table for like the first five weeks. And then suddenly won seven games in a row and just ended up in the playoff spot where there was about four different coaches all fighting tooth and nail over that spot and none of them got it because this Chaos Dwarf team just went on a hot streak I have and to say, nicked the spot. I do like some of these. Uh, <laughs> some of these player names are quite hilarious. Uh, Bumful of Rashes remix. Uh, Knight on Snowdonia rather than Knight of Sidonia. I get that one. Uh, sing for absolute units. It's just such a shame they're probably all going to get murdered, isn't it? If he... Right, okay, so if he gets out of the game with none of that development dead, take it. Happy days. We're giving this one to Rel, aren't we? I, I don't think we can argue otherwise. It's got to be Rel. I'm struggling. Yeah, even with my G-Man hat on. I mean, he'll get some inducements. He'll get plenty of inducements. So, I those mean, chorf inducements. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll get you. Crusader, Maybe you, Fireball. Crusader, do you have a hope for this chorf team, or are we just all going all apple pies? I, I'm, well, I'm not going for apple pies, but I'm not going for this chorf team either. So, uh, yeah, Ghost Abacus. Could could that be his hope that all apple pies blitters into a double skull, kills himself, and Stouticus ends up so tilted still no. Not enough. Uh, <laughs> no. no we saw last time the Stouticus performed better once that thing was off the field and he couldn't use it <laughs> anymore it's true it's actually true I, yeah. I actually played all apple pies last season and uh, in the playoffs and he he don't, he wrote better re-roll turn one didn't do anything <laughs> even after the re-roll then got Bush. KO'd turn two and was unconscious for the entire match at which point he rolled MVP and got block <laughs> so I I won't forget casting the game in which that one player burned five rerolls no. in a hurry. That, that was crazy. I think all we were waiting for was it to happen, weren't we? It was just we sat there going, "Yep." Yeah, yeah, you called it before the game even started. The very first one that you cast of his team. It was beautiful. Right. We got. We're staying. We keep your G-man hat on, Harringsod. We might not be able to support this one, but hopefully we can support the next one. This is arguably the hardest fought qualification in all of G-man. Oh, yeah, this one I'm very impressed with and very on board with. Um, because Muppetillo 
mm. has not only won G-Man Division 4, which was a, let's put this bluntly, a ludicrously stacked division full of really good coaches and really good teams. You'd all came out of the fresh divisions last season. We've, um, we've, we've, we've had death divisions before, haven't we? But this was a death division. And he's won this thing by a mile in the end. He's six points clear of anybody else and eight clear of definitely getting into the playoffs. Um, and the thing is, yeah, he's got the claw upon Wolf, but the rest of the team, you don't look at and think, oh, yeah, that team's massively overpowered. That's why he's here. You actually look at and think, God, he's done really well to be that far ahead with this team. Because it's okay, but it's not like the best Necro team I've ever seen in my life. Well, yeah, I mean, one of his flesh golems has recently died. One of his whites is pretty rookie. He's not getting a huge oh. amount of development anywhere, is he? The flesh golem died in week 13 after he'd already confirmed his place. Oh, that's a nice little send-off from his opponent. <laughs> something because, of course, it did. Yeah. Something for him to remember G-Man 4 by. Now, his opponent... I don't think this is the final opponent because I've heard far too much salt coming out of him for this to possibly. <laughs> I be almost true. don't believe him either, but yes, I think it's either this team or the chore. Is it six um, from Rel Six? That's correct. Mm. This is. Oh, I'm only winning six nil every week of my stays. Right. Yeah. He is. He's done so well. I mean, he's done so well as my stays. Is he got a game still to play? Or is he done? He's done. He's done. Oh, he only won five one. I mean. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What else are hard, right? <laughs> but it's not going to be my stairs, is it? Because he's a pawn. Does his opponent get a buy, or his opponent actually got the game? Well, he's got a lot of buys, but there's there's a game that still has to be played to decide it. Um, the chores. Rogue's um, Gallery taking on the respectable gents. Yes, who that will really decide up. who goes. So who are we thinking? Are we? Ba I mean, the, oh my god, the chores are nineteen twenty, and the, the respectable gents are twelve ten. So the, chor the, the chaos team have won one game all season. It's going to be the chaffs in it. Sorry, my stairs. Yeah, most likely. If you're not going to top spot. It's going to be that. I think it's pretty eighty percent likely to be that chaff team. We'll look at the chaff team. If then. the if the chaffs tie though, even it would go to Mysterious. Really? So yeah, yeah. he has to play to win. But then again, he's got like seven hundred TV on his opponent. But they can also be overshot by Rage Dolph. I'll, Superfed, I'll leave this one to you. Who do you think is going? And we'll talk from there. Rogue's really, Gallery. I want it to be my stairs. I do too. But probably Rogue's Gallery. He kept, so, his uh, opponents just kept struggling to schedule with him, I think. Yes, there was uh, four buys for Rogue's Gallery. So Kinda. Uh, that's hard to not make playoffs at that point if you're a good coach and got a good team, which he does. So uh, I'll, I'll run you through it really quick. Um, Rogue's <laughs> Gallery is uh, Chaos Dwarfs with two Bull Centaurs. You've got one with the uh, Agi 3 block, break, tackle, guard, and sure hands. So that's your mobile ball carrying Bull Centaur. Uh, second ball, Bull Centaur has a block, break, tackle, strip ball, and mighty blow. A little bit more of your. A blitzer. It is whether you know it. It isn't actually Rogue's Gallery. It's Rouge's Gallery. Rouge's Gallery? Oh, you're right. <laughs> that was chat. Thank you very much to Stakemittens for pointing that out. Um, Rouge's Gallery. There we go. I've got to ask, why the four rerolls do we think? I feel like that's too many greed. on the team. Greed rerolls. Lots and lots of greed rerolls. Because we've got three Claw, Mighty Blow, Chaos Dwarf blockers. One of which also has Horns. And piling on. <laughs> it's it's the traditional typo. Oh my god! After you've spent several seasons with uh, with a team with this ty typo in the title, that's got to drive you mental, on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's no show oh, yeah, guard on this team. He's got uh, six guard. <laughs> He's got a dirty player hobo or block hobo. Um, but this is your oh rabbi chaos dwarf. Remove them all. Right, I think it's worth pointing out as well that obviously there's a little bit of, I don't know if shade's the word being thrown at the fact that he's had four bye weeks, but if his opponents won't schedule with him, it's not his fault. Exactly. Yeah, well, it's, it's, I mean, I we've mean, looked in, we That's have looked into it. It's not like he's going, you can play me at 12 or 1 every week <laughs> on, on the Wednesday, and that's my only time slot. Like, he's actually quite available. Hmm. Yeah. So he's also got a ridiculously good Chaos Dwarf blocker. I love the horns pickup as a second double. I love that. 
I think that's really good. I'm also a fan of uh, L-shaped in chat there saying that they're very well made up chops. With, uh, <laughs> nice, nice blush on the cheeks. Big fan. Big fan of that. Mm. Yeah. Right, Lots so who, who wins? Who wins? Because I, like, I feel like Muppetillo isn't going to be terrified of more kill. I mean, this is a guy who's walked through kill every week to get where he is, right? Mm. This it's, much kill? This is a lot of kill. I mean, Jimmy Fantastic has a lot of kill on his team too. He, he literally This went, much kill? He went the surge route of everyone gets kill first. So, yeah, probably this much kill. All right. It's yeah, a lot of kill. It, it's kill. I mean, obviously, Muppetillo's got the claw palm wolf with jump up. I think he's got jump up as well. He does have jump up, yeah. No so, tackle, though. that thing can run around deleting chorfs if it likes. I kind of, I, I'm just saying, right? I kind of feel like Muppetillo's going to look at this matchup. In very much the same way that Michaels looked at the Blissful Fire matchup, he's just rolling up his sleeves and going, time to go to work, boys. I don't think it's phasing him. No, it, it's very much dependent on his wolf, I think. I think it, if the wolf brings its removal game, then Muppetillo's got every chance in the world of walking away with this one. If that thing has an off day where it's getting stuns and can't get anything off the field, then... Eventually, I think all of this claw mighty blow will take its toll. Mister J knows how to foul as well, though. So if you're going to put that werewolf voluntarily on the, it might find its way off the pitch. Mm. It's all about picking the times, isn't it? But then again, I'm assuming Muppetillo knows how to foul, and Turtle will be doing the same thing. It could be a bloody game. We can promise that much. So who be wins? Fun. Who wins? Their opponent in the round of 32 wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's the correct answer there. Actually, the terrifying thing being their opponent in the round of 32 is just more kill because it's probably it's, Stauticus. It's Stauticus. Stauticus is the winner from this part of the bracket, right? Uh, yeah. He does feel like he's got a good old, oh, they're all going to kill each other for me. That'll be nice. <laughs> kind, of, kind of approach to his run through playoffs. Um, Crusader, who are you coming down on? Because you're the neutral party here. I'm very uh, aware I need to engage you and keep you awake. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I had a lead-based energy drink before. Um, I feel if this wolf goes to ground uh, and he doesn't protect it or is just a little bit careless with it, it's probably getting kicked to, you know, six ways from Sunday. And that would probably give a massive favor to Mr. Jane. Uh, Rouge's gallery. Uh, I think my gut says to go with the chorfs, but like, I don't like that, so I'm going with the uh, the, the, the necro. <laughs> Tarring Zod, are you are you supporting the the G man? Is this, is this an easier one to make than the last G man? It, it is. I can't I can't watch Muppetillo destroy G man fall like that and then not back him here. So and Superfed, yeah. I assume you're just going to say chorfs, and we'll move on from that. We've, sure. we've finished the first corner of the bracket, and it's only took us an hour and 15 minutes. Isn't that dead That's efficient, right? Got it. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop that one out, and look what look at this, right? We have the technology. There's the other part, another part of the bracket somewhere else. We're in the top right now. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Kumo Stern, and he's got some rats. Is he hmm. finalized? Uh, no, so there are still... Let me count. What's the um, coach's name? Kumo Stern. Okay. You dirty-minded shit. That's not what I heard. <laughs> Why am I not surprised Superfed went there? Which, which division are we looking at hiring for this? Division 3, and I think there's three coaches that can still finish in this spot. Um, there's the Skaven, there's Nurgle Murgle Urgle. Oh, we're in that fight. The literal Nurgle Murgle Urgle. Hmm. A Nurgle Murgle Urgle. Somehow team. Mustang BBC, who every single time I see one of their match reports, it's just players dying. I tell you what, let's assume that the Rats are going to win this because it'll make for a very interesting discussion about who their opponents are likely to be. Okay, I can dig that. So, they are playing the Dwarfs, actually, and if the Dwarfs beat them, then the Dwarfs, I think, despite being in fifth place right, right now, would overhaul them <laughs> if they win 2-0. That's been how a close very, this is. It's been a very uh, close game, uh, close season, this one, hasn't it? So let's go with the Rats. They're um, a bit filthy. And... Yes, they, they are, rather. Um, I'm going to assume it's one of those. Yeah, Natty One Turner, there it is. So we've got a lot of level ups to process as well, which makes this a little tricky to talk about. 
Because the team isn't going to look like this for the game against the uh, the Dwarves. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to look like a lot of red, red stones on the pitch. Possibly. Um, but obviously we've got a natural one-turner and that instantly makes a Skaven team about 50% better, doesn't it? Well, it makes it 50% harder to beat them because you tend to do whatever you can do to try and score and then they just go, hey, look what I can do, bang. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, as, as the two above me here in the chat just die. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, listen to talk about this team all day. <laughs> so, oh. um, where am I at? So, they've got the one Turner, who's due a level as well. Um, but they've also got 14 players, which means they can keep him on the bench. I like I like a rat team with a bench. It's It, it does allow you to shield the one Turner as much as humanly possible. <clears throat> yes. The throw is quite good calm. for a thrower. Uh, I'm uh, assuming he's probably going to get block because he doesn't have block it, and that'll give him blodge, which would be really nice. Yeah, and the quicker we move on from Cummerstone right now, the better. <laughs> His opponent is uh, Ariel, I believe. I yes. have no idea which division this is. Uh, it's Rath one of the one? yeah, it's one of the fresh ones that is Skaven or Skaven essentially. Which which fresh one do we know? C. Is it C? C? Okay. Has that suit fed had a chance to breathe? <sighs> a little bit. There he is. That was, that was... Rats against Stay. Teen Stars. It's Razzlestorm. The yes, the absolute uh, hilarity of, of this situation, I'm sure Harry Unless well. unless, by the way, Random Actimus gets a draw in his last game with his Skaven team. Uh, in which case it's squeaky blinders instead. And yeah, it's okay. That's a thing as well. Uh Razzle the interesting part being we, we, while we're still stuck on Kumo stains or whatever whatever you're laughing at. <laughs> Stop it. Ra Razzle was a, a really kinda like eighties British porn mag as well. Well the so, things you learn. So that'll just add to the comedy when Superfed that, ends up yeah. casting this match. One. I'm gonna cast this game for sure. <laughs> There's no way I don't cast this game. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You will lose your sports reporter credentials if you take this one from me. Uh, <laughs> so the, let's just assume that it's Razzlestorm since they're there right now. Uh, Rats against Team Stars. They've got uh, Sea Palm Holland, who doesn't quite have Sea Palm. Um, don't you love it when you put a name on something and it doesn't actually work that way? Uh, it Harry Styles, though, on, has claw. Took God. I mean, yeah, exactly. Well, he got claw on the other guy, Harry Styles. So. That's what it is. Um, he's got a thrower with block, so probably just hasn't died yet. Uh, a lot of block <laughs> gutter runners, uh, one with tackle, um, which is weird uh, that you wouldn't have gone with like maybe Dauntless first or something, but that block tackle seems a little strange. And then a diving tackle gutter, uh, wrestle strip ball. He does have an Agi 5 gutter, which is nice. But he doesn't, key point, doesn't have a plus movement one turn nonsense rat. Correct. To give it its official title. It doesn't have easy mode. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have win now. <laughs> yeah. Nonsense rat, I like that. Right. So who wins? <laughs> the one with the nonsense rat. Who who wins? And is it super fed? <laughs> For getting to cast this match. This will be fun. I, I, I'm joining you on this match, Superfed. So it'll be fun. Can yeah. we can we put a, a, an age appropriate warning on this one? Because I think it's going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more fun if you uh, don't ever acknowledge it. Okay, fine, fine. So <laughs> so Zod, it's 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 got to be the one turner, right? It's the it's the team with the nonsense in a team in a match between two rat teams. It's going to be the one with the nonsense rat that wins. And they've got 14 of them as opposed to 13 of these. How are they doing this, by the way? What what sort of Skaven versus Skaven match has 27 players in it? None. It's kind of end up with like three on the, <laughs> on the pitch each, so whatever. The, I will say that the... <laughs> Poor the tackle... in chat looking on going, what? How do they have the... that many? <laughs> the block tackle gutter actually has a purpose in a Skaven on Skaven match. <laughs> he can actually... <laughs> Get a tackle block on a gutter. It can hunt other gutters. Yeah, that's something. So I'm assuming you're both going regional for this one. Yeah, no reason not to. Who said Agi it? Who, who wins? Uh, 
I think movement 10 is probably the uh, the big difference between these two teams. Um, so I'm going to back Comerstone's team. <laughs> there it is. Oh, that was an inevitable pick. You're nice. right behind him. You're really backing him. Just... Mate, look, it's going to be an entertaining match, but... Um, Not I, because I, of the blood bowl. Oh, God, no. God no, the no, immature. No, we're, we're absolutely getting to the super entertaining match in this bracket. In not next, but the one after is, oh, is yeah. the, this is the best one. corner of the bracket for sure. Right, it's it's an interesting one for for certain. Right, we're staying in rel. We're going to puck stop, and I don't know where puck stop plays. I think it's uh, rel two. Rel two. I didn't realize. I believe that. he plays at home. He is going to be the first chorf in Division One for rel. So that'll wow, be very exciting. That's quite. He beaten kicks of all people. To the to the mm-hmm. mark there, it's, it, that that feels slightly insane because Kicks has been around. He for robbed him of his like. glory, yeah. Potentially, right. Quicks could also get up there too. But anyway, uh, Team Speak Crew version four. No idea what happened to versions one through three. Uh, they are a short team that's kind of stumbled their way up the ladder. They didn't actually have the fastest start um, or the most wins, but they were one of the few that did ride the reroll coattails up and then found wins once they got a little bit more developed. Um, this season, however, was high predictions and then the very, very first game of the season, an entity, a bull centaur, with 128 SPP. Sure hands, blodge, break tackle, frenzy, killed. In addition, a 74 SPP chorf was killed in the same game against the uh, uh, the dwarves of Chaos of Bulu. Um, and so I immediately wrote this team off and said, well, it's a rebuilding season. Have fun. Uh, and apparently all of his opponents just underestimated him. And now uh, he ran away with the division. He um, also has one of the best name players anywhere in Rebel in in the fantastic Boat Lord, Lord of Boats. Boat Lord, Lord of Boats, <laughs> yes. Version 6. <laughs> he loves his boat, doesn't he? He's, he's been around a bit, hasn't he? There's, there's been five previous ones. He's not given up on this name. This team just <laughs> suffers so much attrition and just endures and endures. For an AV9 player, like you should not be on version 6 in three seasons or four seasons. Um, but yet here we are. And, and Tweed is incredible. Well. Tweed is incredible, right? I'm unsure why he went stand firm before piling on when he got claw, but I'll take it, I guess. A stand firm kills killers, and so if you're going after this killer, uh, you're going to get stuck and then stomped. All right, so who is going to get stuck and stomped? It is a guy currently I've got flagged as High Linic, hmm. who I do not know at all, Harringzard. It's rats. It is rats. All more rats in this rats, bit. Rats from where? We've literally got puck stop and an infestation. It is uh, 8B. Well, it's, 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 it's fresh rats. That's not something that... Yeah. It, I don't think you want to uh, see Chorf. Nonsense rat. You haven't pulled it up yet. Also, they're called the dirty black rats. Uh, uh, it's got another nonsense rat. It's got a nonsense rat. It's got a nonsense rat. Yeah, but he's got Chorf. Well, I've got two, two palm blitzers, so they can do things. But no claw. Key, key point, no claw. Yes. This is going to play out a lot like uh, my game against the team that shall not be named, because they don't have a name. Um, where attrition that happens over time, and if it goes to overtime, and the rats do win the kick, and they don't get the ball in right away, they're gonna lose. Chores are just gonna keep removing them until there's no rats. I remember that game. It was a silly, silly game. Now it's worth pointing out that it might not be rats because it could be Brett's. I, that's better. I, I think that's incredible. Because we haven't had a Brett team in playoffs since season five. And didn't they um, just go straight back out? <laughs> yeah. Um, so all of a sudden, there's a, I think there's two with a very good chance and one with an outside chance. Um, we're, we're trying to make Bretonia great again. It's a nice Bretonian <laughs> team. Don't, don't feed it to the Chorfs. Give it another season to be really nice. It's a good-looking team. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with the rats going through because I don't want this team to die just yet. I like Bretonians. <laughs> That's a lot of guard. It's a, it's a Bretonians well... are great and fun, but they are not chorf killers. No. No, <laughs> no they're not. No. <laughs> I also love that he's got a lineman called the Greedy Shrubbery, which is, is fantastic. Yeah, it, it's a Monty Python-themed 
Mm, I know, but it's still... Yeah, it's we've still... seen a million of them. It's a modern I know, but the fact that he went to. a different route with the name for me works. Mm. So, can we just quickly write this one off as Chops are going to munch the hell out of rats unless the nonsense rat one turns? It's all on the nonsense rat. Crusader is nonsense rat beating... Um, beating all those vicious, mean Chaos Dwarves, or is it going to be a very short playoff run for... Thir Ionic. 13 play 13 players, Nuffles Alta, probably not enough players to keep the uh, one turner on the sideline for the entirety of the game. I'm giving it to the Chorfs. And Fed, I think it's a foregone conclusion. You're expecting the Chorfs to, to do this, aren't you? Chorfs. What does the dog think? <laughs> what does the dog think? What does Dobby think? Uh, definitely Chorfs. Chorfs. <laughs> Sausages. <laughs> yeah, definitely Chorfs. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's one more than the, the Skaven have. Put can out. we can we move on to the next game? Because it's the best one. This is the best one ever, right? Because I think this one, I personally have an opinion on how this is going to go, and it's not the way people are going to think I'm going to say it's going to go. Anyway, we we all know Sage. He's won the damn Super Bowl, right? He we kind of know who he is. Yeah, but interestingly, Sage won the thing at the worst point of his team development. But he's also played significantly worse since then. Having played against Sage, I kind of... I, I respect the guy. I love the guy. He's a brilliant dude to talk to. He's very, very good at Blood Bowl. But I kind of feel like this team's made him a little bit lazy. Well, and a lot I, of it's dead. And I don't think he's putting out results that he should be. But anyway, to take okay. us through Aaron's odd, I'll be one moment. Yeah, so... This looks a lot different to the last time we probably saw it in the playoffs because much of it has been killed, uh, probably by metal and bleeding hippie and just the rest of G-Man 1, really. Um, so we've still got AVQC, but he is agility busted, but it doesn't really matter. It's not really his job to go around dodging things. I kind um, of resent that comment. I didn't kill any of this team this season because I couldn't play him because I had a family emergency. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you actually did, to be fair. Okay, well, okay, so we've also got the standard claw palm block guard, Zaki Rel. Uh, block guard, he's having to, what he's done is with these new Chaos Warriors, he's developed guard first um, because such is the high quantity of high strength teams in G Man 1 that he just needs it. Yeah, if you don't pick up guard fast in G Man 1, you don't get to play the fighting game. You have to play the ball and sage doesn't like playing the ball with his team yeah well he's got he's still got the it's now armor seven stick has um who is you know he's blocked sure hands and he's got lots of heads and arms and he's got a massive hand and he's basically an insect at this point he's a funny um, looking old beast isn't he look at him look at him there it, with this big hand give them an extra it, arm as well it does if you look on the stream real quick you can see the yeah. the forearm so he's even got an eye on his hand He's got the eye yeah, so going on. He's actually an insect because he's got six limbs at this point. So I think we're cool with that. And two heads. And two heads. So there's a lot going on there. Um, but, you know, whatever floats your boat. Right. It's, it's a good team. It's very trim. I mean, it's only 1900 TV. It's, look at its stats, right? This is something insane. 68, 12, 14. That's a ridiculously good amount of of wins in that, that many games, right? That's 94 oh, yeah, games I mean, and only It 14. just always comes back to the playoffs every season. Yeah, every there's minutes. been a lot of teams who have gone up to G-Man 1 and tried to beat the Sage, and not many of them have done it. Um, because remember, most most of those, are probably maybe a third of those losses have probably come in the playoffs themselves. It's worthy of note. Been there so many times. None of those teams that have taken a shot at Sage have been have been our our next contender. It's 10E, isn't yeah. it? It's 10E. Yeah, it is, yeah. We saw them earlier this morning perform. It is Menage a Trey. Did they win Menage that game in the end, or did they... They lost one, though. Oh, no. They got the bad dice out of the way. I do love the, the team powers. name. I love the... <clears throat> I love the coach. He's actually locked as a top dude. Larkstar did not want to play in the playoffs last season, and he just would not lose. <laughs> <laughs> the cold-blooded exes went on a tear. For the and uninitiated, just to interrupt Fed, by the way, this isn't the Stunty Cup champion, although it is, but this isn't the Stunty Cup ticket. Yeah, he won his division, uh, which was 10-E. 10-E, it was. Uh, and uh, they beat Dwarves, they beat 
Can I just Amazons. talk about a 733 record as Halflings? That's really it's good. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, he's just a top tier coach uh, playing a lowest possible tier team and doing really well with it. Um, <laughs> was that the I dog really providing have... some opinion there? He was. He was agreeing. He was like, well, read, don't read forget the about the... Yeah. I'm the not eating there. a damn shoe. I said it for that season. Beard. Yes, the shoe. The shoe should be eaten, but we'll let it go. Uh, no, because I said if it's needed this season, I will eat a shoe. If if a stu- I said that season, if a stunty can qualify without a stunty cup ticket, I'd eat a shoe. They yeah, didn't. but it was pretty much only me coaching halflings that season. No, there never. wasn't, because we had Monty and we had... I, I think as a compromise, we make you do a shoey. Hey, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Well, you plan to do that when you come over for my wedding anyway, so or a it'll happen at some point. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to refocus everybody on on Kedgerus who said that if an Orga team ever wins a Super Bowl and there was no time limit on this one, he'd eat a Rebel T-shirt. Not the point, though, is it? I mean, anyway. I need anyway, something. I this love. Is... I love that he took a double and took kick as opposed to like one of the usual skills. I really like that kind of level of pitch control that he brings. It makes sense. I mean, it's a really valuable skill, especially on a stunty team. Um, a lot of people would expect block or sure hands, but kick is actually very useful. Um, it actually makes the ridiculous blitz zero turn touchdown possible, just a little bit more likely. So, uh, And he's got a movement up. He's got a lot of sure feet, not a lot of sidestep, no diving tackle. Um but it's a deep root inducement team. It's it's a it's... shelf inducement team as well with his one base yeah. rule. Yep. It's the same way I built my halfling team, except Lockstar knows what he's doing. Right. So and... who wins? Who wins? Hmm. <laughs> there is a world where the Sage loses round one to a rookie team, which is where he's done it before. And it happens to be halflings. Remember when I said I felt like Sage had got had got lazy? I'm trying to be impartial as the host, but I I actually think Larkstar can take this. What think... I'm going to put out there as a bounty is literally I will buy you twenty dollars Steam card for whoever captures, and this is going to be subjective, so you know everybody gets a chance, but it's going to be up to me. Whoever captures the exact moment, either on a picture or on a GIF or a, a Twitch clip, of when the sage realizes he is going to lose the game. To halflings. It'll if that be... moment happens, you need to capture that moment, that exact expression on his face when he realizes that the game is out of his hands. That is what I want to I see. I feel like it'll be that moment in The Simpsons where you see little Ralph Wiggum's heartbreak <laughs> in, in slow motion. It's going to be like that, but with the sage. <laughs> but I, I assume you're backing Larkstar. Super fed. He doesn't lose in the playoffs. He he wants to lose. He can't lose. It doesn't. The dice don't let him. Right. And uh, Haringzard. I mean, you're all idiots. Sage is going to win. <laughs> Crusader. A million gold for inducements. Go halflings. Oh come on. Even as the host, I'm sorry. I I I play against the Sage. I played against the Sage. I beat the Sage actually. And drawn with him. I've never lost to the Sage in G Man 1. A million in inducements to Halflings. Right. Who's going to stop yeah. him? Pug I'm it. sorry. I'm sorry. If I can beat the Sage, this team can beat the Sage. <laughs> Your team is different to this team. <laughs> I just yeah, want to get... see the dice. I just want to see the dice. That's all that matters. Your, your team is worth three times as much team value as this team medal. I know, but oh, if I can beat the sage. it's coached by me as opposed to someone who knows what they're doing with their race. I'm not 100% sure I still know what I'm doing with Nurgle. I'm going for Larkstar. <laughs> yeah, True Blue, it's something like that, yeah. Um, right, moving on. We're going, finally, Crusade is going to have something to say other than an opinion. He can bring some facts again for a change. We're going to Julian in the Big O. I don't know where in the Big O Julian's from, but I know the name. Uh, <clears throat> Julian is actually from Division 3. Uh, he's coming second there. I believe he has security second place. He's gone 8-3-2, 13 games played, 11 touchdowns is uh, the difference he's got there. Uh, never swapping. Necro team. 
I think. Yeah, looks about right. <laughs> he's got a couple of really nice walls, actually. Uh, and the rest of his team's not looking too shabby. <laughs> Can I just say, right, two things. The ghoul's in the wrong damn place. And the, if, even if the ghoul was in the right place, it would be never going to never gonna give you up, never going to let you down, never run around Rigor the Scavenger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good Pokemon. <laughs> Which... That got me there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the song. <laughs> hey man, Rigor just wants in. Um, <clears throat> no, he's got, a, he's got a couple. Of, he's got a couple of nice players. Uh, it's a shame that his werewolf is uh, agi busted. Uh, one of them at least. Um, I, I also that, big shout outs to the fact that he's played around the rebel naming rules by by having three players with the same name. In, with <laughs> with the, the three instead of the E and he hasn't done a no potato or ask you rats. He's made sure they're named differently while keeping uh, yeah. I I like this guy. Big up to him. Apart from Oh, so I get so, so what he means by never swapping is that when somebody dies, he's not juggling around the player names. That's why the song's getting more and more sync the more <laughs> players that die. Except nothing <laughs> seems to have died. I like this theme. This is a good theme. <laughs> so, yeah, he the lost... is never gonna die, is he? <laughs> No. Anyway, Crusader, no. tell us about the team, and, and and it's actually quite good, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a combination of the team being quite good and Julian uh, being not. A, he's become a decent player. Um, big fan of watching him play and, and seeing how he does. Uh, but yeah, like a couple. He's got a good wolf. Yes, again, the shame the other one's agi busted. But what are you going to do? Uh, a couple of flesh golems that aren't too shabby. The whites is looking pretty nice. And then, of course, they're just the zombies and the ghouls that you go along with as well. They're all sort of... It's like a no-frills sort of necro yeah. team that you sort of just want. Both the wolves, identical builds. Slightly different orders, but identical actual builds. I love I love um, picking up Dauntless on a wolf. I'm just a big fan of that. He's got two Agi-4, which makes the ball handleable. But is his hmm. opponent <clears throat> handleable? I mean, somewhere in excess of both saying that he's always been good. I think he's, I think he's gotten a hell of a lot better this season. So, you ruined my link. I segued perfectly there, and you've killed. Yeah, me. well, right. where's Jimmy Burrito from? Jimmy Burrito's three. Super fed. This is you. Oh, Jimmy Burrito, four, four, thick, rich, and creamy. Uh, he survived a rabbi. He has the T-shirt to prove it. Um. <laughs> He uh, did really well this season. He is the one, though, that cannot keep werewolves alive to win a, like for more than a couple of games. Uh, he bought Moon Moon off the market, who promptly died within four games. I believe he's <laughs> yeah he's lost four werewolves in three seasons or four seasons, three or four seasons. Yeah, I heard um, I heard rumors he he basically tried to kill a bunch of Kedgeroos as old players. What's fun though is none of them ever get mighty blow, so that's nice. Um, including the ones on his team now. He his white's pretty good. Cannot though. get doubles. His whites are solid. He's got some mighty blow. Um, he's only got uh, Count Roque, uh, Roquefort. The Rockfall. Second? Rockfort, the second. Uh, who's got uh, tackle palm and jump up and movement up. But it's niggled. So it's had better days. Um, Jewel has better back. wolves. Jimmy has better guns. Liscaris, absolutely accurate in chat. I have to say, we were actually—I was talking to Jimmy earlier because he's struggling to decide this level up on Havarti makes you farty. Um, it's a double. I do know it's a double. We don't know what it's going to be. Diving tackle would be the only reasonable double. I mean, he could take a normal. You don't have to take the double, but I like diving tackle too because it just makes the flesh columns utterly impossible to get a deal with, isn't it? If you don't take the diving tackle, you just take regular tackle. Yeah, that makes sense. So who wins? Good golems uh, or good wolves? Where was I mean, uh, never swapping from? Oh, Big O. Uh, which division? Three. Div three. three. So Jimmy, Jimmy's going to win because he's, he's had the harder road to get here. Uh, and he's got the scars to prove it. He's had to just battle through... Some of the nastiest teams in the whole league. Um, like I said, Arabi, the Chorfs that just don't even want to win. Um, <laughs> He's got five wins this season, and one of them was a legal concede. At least one of them was a legal concede. Yeah. 
He beat the number one team in the Div, though. <laughs> uh, two zero. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I got to go with uh, Rel Jimmy Burrito, man. He's got this. He's got this. No problem. And Crusader. Nah, the Wolves here are gonna tear these golems to shreds. That's that's where the real winner is. Uh, do you say he's five wins? No, no, Arabi no, has five Arabi. wins. Arabi, oh, Arabi there's a five. team in his division say. that he had to battle through, whose literal entire goal is to get as yeah, many yeah, legal yeah. Is get as I'm, many I'm, legal concedes as possible. That team yeah. have eighty two casualties and they've only played twelve games. They've got one to go. Yeah, no, I I'm aware of Arabi. I mean Julian went through what two Nurgle teams, a couple of wizards, some dwarves, some dark elves, some humans. I, I honestly think that these these whites are going to be the big key factor here. They're going to break through that armor eight and armor nine. No dramas. Julian's got this. Um, I have faith. the tiebreaker, the breaker of ties. Uh, actually, genuinely a really tough call, but I cannot give up on Regal the scavenger, can I? <laughs> Julian, Julian takes it. I, I kind of, yeah, I love, I love Julian's team theme just a little bit more than Jimmy Burrito's. Uh, sorry, Jimmy, I know you're in chat, and I know Julian isn't, but I'm, I'm back, and I, I like that. Agree, that shout. We're gonna stick in Rel though, back up to Rel one, I believe, for a, a coach that has kind of passed over the international radar a little bit. Is it Rel one? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Grody Greens, Lazarus Diggs uh, made his way to Rel 1 via the playoffs um, and Rel 3, so he just skipped right over 2. Uh, he was the first Nurgle team to make it up to Rel 1, and uh, there were a lot of early questions about Lazarus Diggs. Jimmy, and how you just don't have Rigo the Scavenger. Sorry, mate. <laughs> he has Orabita he has insurance. But. Uh, but yeah, so Lazarus Diggs, some questions when he first came in. Um a couple loose wins, and then he really buckled down, and I'd say uh, put up some very impressive wins as well. He did find a couple dead Nurgle warriors along the way, um, so he did pay some Rel One uh, entry fee taxes, but uh, he he's come along, and you know he's he almost won the whole thing, uh, but uh, I think Sace is going to end up taking those honors. I have uh, he to does say... have a movement up, movement down, which I know is your favorite. Crusader likes that kind of thing. I have to say, right, as a Nurgle coach, there's not much anymore, knowing that I'm like the apex Nurgle coach, kind of, at this point, having by far the most TV out of all of us. There's not much that I'm jealous about on other Nurgle teams, but that is a hell of a beast of Nurgle. Yes. Easily the best beast of Nurgle in the league, with block, strength up, stand firm, and guard. There is no, I guess, if you could, if you could get a, a second double on this one, you'd probably want tackle or dodge um, when dodge. he gets to level it's, 76. It's so dodge. If you get a double, that's dodge. Uh, just to confirm, chat, by the way, um, Grody Greens were in Division 4 last season. Oh, 4, that's right. They jumped. Yeah, they, they double jumped. Um, they came they jumped up a quite lot. a bit, didn't they? Cause... But they did well in the playoffs to earn that. And they won... Yeah, they dominated that division, so we gave them the boost, and they seem to have done okay. They did, yes. They made playoffs again. Uh, they're definitely a, a top coach with a top team. They're going to win. They, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> you, you're giving that to them. Um, their opponent is... I, I think uh, our good friend Crusader will be happy. Uh, their opponent will be playing the Russian National Anthem. It's Kubota. It's, it's all but confirmed unless he loses about 6 0 in the final week. <laughs> um, so he's pretty much there. Is Where's Kubota. he from? He's from G Man 8A. Yes, this is a rookie Kiz Love team <laughs> that I've been watching very closely. It's, just, it's what? It's a voodoo doll. Is it is it because you wanna buy <laughs> is it because you wanna buy what's left after uh, <laughs> after they go through Red Lazarus? I just I, I feel like this is another tossing a good team to the wolves situation, isn't it? They've done very well. Ridiculously um, well. They've done very, very well. So full credit to Kabusta, because obviously what first season Kislev I don't think is the easiest thing to play in the world. No. No, it's uh, really not. No, is it really not? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so they've got a Palm Blitzer, which is nice. But obviously, Nurgle Warriors, are they that bothered about Palm 
really, you know, probably not. I think they can cope. Um, but, you know, they've got the leap threat and the fact that there's a couple of Nurgle warriors that don't have guard means that if you end up with a cage where the positioning's a bit wrong, then there's every chance of the, the Kislev nipping in there and causing a bit of havoc. What there's I think caging. they're missing... Okay. I was just saying, what I think they're missing is a strength four player to leap into the cage with. I think that would really help them out in this match. There's caging, and then there's Lazarus Diggs caging. And there were several games at the beginning of the where there was six or more players around the ball. That's a lot of players. <laughs> not optimal play, not removal gameplay, but definitely anti leap in the cage with guard and then two die play. Kislev proof, yeah. Yes. Okay. And with those tentacles. Hang on. So is it is it meek? If it's full meat cube, there is a wizard available for Kabusta. Oh, here we go. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there is. So uh, tough for him to win this one, but. You never know. Kislev are one of those... It's like vampires, isn't it? It's one of those weird teams who... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't take this conversation seriously. Uh, let's just pray for what's left of Kabusta's team and move on. <laughs> Fair. Crusader, can you give me much argument against against this team not getting eaten? Well, I mean, I don't see Nurgle eating them because I've never seen Nurgle player eat anything in its life, but I can certainly see them killing them. Fair. We'll give that one a roll. <laughs> yeah. G Man again. Bazar Bazark? Uh Bazark. Well, five, right? G Man five, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, obviously a coach that I know quite a bit about because he's beaten me in the first place, unless he loses nine nil in the final. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. He is playing the bottom of the table high elf team. I mean that that um, helps. So <laughs> You know, you never know, right? No, you never we, we know. kind of do, let's face it. But I think you do. So You've um, got to be glad he's beating you to the top. Um, so I'm not dumped out by halflings, yeah? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, so obviously, the way this season went, I think when I looked at this division to start with, I kind of looked at a few teams, you know, you think, right, they're going to be a threat. And this team was definitely one of those. Um, that ghoul is a unit because he's got hidden mighty blow because that thing removed three of my tomb guardians <laughs> and i'm still not sure how that happened but you see that it claw mighty blow. blow wolf that that didn't do a thing it was all the ghoul so watch out for combo carl <laughs> combo carl um, do we that, know who they're the, playing they're playing the Stunty Cup champion. Yeah, we do know who they're playing. The Stunty Cup is... champion is locked as well. It's an orc coach, isn't it? Um, it's yeah, it is. So it's the Stunty Cup champion, except it's not the champion because Larkstar is the champion. It's the Stunty yeah, Cup runner-up, runner up, yeah. which is unless Gypsy Prince wins seven nil tomorrow. It's yeah, <laughs> Gypsy Prince is here to say not locked. It's Chubberson. Oh, it's Gypsy Prince, but it's Chubberson. And it's the so second halfling team when we've never had halflings before. You need to win by seven, I believe, Gypsy. We could have two halflings in the the round of eight. Where is the halfling team from? Four B. <clears throat> Four B. And it is troublesome. Yep. And I will tell you right now, he's got a couple of sexy trees. Both of them are movement three. One of break tackle, one's grab. He's got an edgy th uh, should be plus edgy uh, halfling. Those are, uh, and, then, and it feels weird to say it, some pretty rapid trees. Hey, they, oh, wow. uh, they give you wood <laughs> on the double. Feel bad for making that joke. Two uh, edgy yeah, fours like, as well is nice. Uh, yeah, uh, edgy four, yeah, two edgy fours, one of which has sprint and short feet as well. Uh, and he also plays the very... I mean, there's a couple of ways you can play trees uh, that we've seen in the video. One is Monty's route, where you don't care about your TV, you just go whatever. Uh, well, the second one is the standard. I keep my TV trim. I get the knuckles altar, uh, and I just buy a bunch of inducements. So is so, it be is it beating Berserk, Berserk, Berserk? I look. I honestly think that he's going to struggle to beat this uh, Necro team. If those were like if if uh, Snoop Dogg fires up and gets that claw money blow going, the trees could very quickly find themselves turned into tables. 
Um, but it's halflings. We've seen stranger things happen, so. Anyone, anyone, where where are we coming down on this one? Is this is this gonna be is this gonna be the season where we see two potentially two flings go to the round of thirty two, or is it just gonna I... be a lot of dead stunties <clears throat> getting fed into a grind? We've I... never we've never seen a stunty team win in the playoffs up to this point. They've always got here via the ticket and then just got creamed essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Chubberson's gonna struggle to win this one. Berserk was solid. He's a solid coach. Yep. I, I kind of want to give it to Berserk as well, I think. And Fed? Yeah, I think that there's no reason that the Halflings are going to win this one. It's a shame. But well done for getting here. Well done, well We're done, only Fed. Gonna get one. Well, We're only going to get one on, Halfling you... win. Well, are we giving him a well done? He kind of got in the back door. I don't think you should give him the Discord he's, flare. He's oh no, he's not getting the champion flare, but he okay, has good, only yeah. lost three games as halflings this season. Okay, well uh, maybe he That's even good. deserves the flare. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's the same as Larkstar. Wow. Obviously, Larkstar oh. won a few more. Right, but he doesn't. He doesn't get the flare. Okay, fair. I can. I can. I can agree with that. This team, I believe, are playing right now. Uh, they're playing. Maybe Orc will work. And they're literally on the pitch as we speak. But it is absolute disaster by Thomas T. And I can tell you from experience, Thomas T is a damn good coach that does not give up. And his elves are made out of rubber. I didn't expect him to do as well as he has done in Division 1. I mean, this is the guy, Herring Zord, who we threw him into Div 1 and we felt a little bit guilty about it, but we thought maybe he was ready. And we mm. were looking at it, and there's obviously G-Man 1 is known because it's got me in there, it's got several big Orc teams in there, it's got Sage in there, it's now got Infinite Pink and Bleeding Hippie in there. You know, there's a lot of death kicking around in G-Man 1. Mm. And we think, so you, you know, there's a, but there's a couple of elves, and you're thinking, oh, the elves are like the soft targets for each other. In his first game in G-Man 1, he murdered like three of the Bloodthirsty Seaguard. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's just I, an elf on elf hate crime. I, I tell you where I fear for Thomas. He seems to have this awful habit of finishing one place below the playoff cutoff line. And he's currently in fourth place. And that's very close to fifth place. Which there's is a, one place below the playoff cutoff line. But the thing is, there's a world where Infinite Pink, because he's playing Gaudi's Ravenclaws, doesn't go to play. You know, I, I don't think right, Pink but has got Obviously, it because fifth and sixth are playing each other... Unless it's a draw, which is good for Thomas. One of the if one of them wins and Thomas doesn't win um, against Gerber, then he's got a problem. I have it on good authority that Gerber's not having the best game, uh, given that he told me <laughs> he <laughs> has had to apple a minus movement on knife juggler. Oh really? Let it die, Gerber. And he was kind of sad it didn't come up dead. Anyway. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna go with Thomas T. I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's a very very accomplished dark elf coach. Have we talked about his opponent? Uh, we're getting there. It is. We're sliding on over to Ariel again. Oh, Everyone God, this... must know this guy by now. Um, yeah, but this division medal. It's five, isn't it? It's five. Is it five? It's eight. Eight. It's a god. I was way too... There's so many rail divisions now. So there's currently three points between first and sixth in this division. Oh. And the Wonder Twin Powers. And the Wonder Twin Powers. Did anyone watch the Steak Mittens Shadora game? Because Steak that... Mittens. <laughs> Steak it... Mittens made a hand puppet out of Shadora. <laughs> <laughs> it, he he uh he he went very very bad touch on a Shadora, didn't he? And uh, who's it, it gonna fun. who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Shadora? <laughs> And uh, I think a Bretonian uh, Steak, Steak is not going to get the 10 0 win. So, yes, <laughs> I think it's going to be yeah. Shadora. Steak, well, Steak Mittens needs a 10 0 win, but the Battle Brothers, the Bretonian team, are playing tonight against oh, I know. the Wood yeah, Elves, who are oh, right God. down the bottom of the table. So, mm. there's a good chance that if you, I don't know if you've seen the blitzers on that. I kind of. Right, as much as I love Steak Mittens and Shadora, I, I, do, I think Shadora's a great guy. I, I kind of want to look at Caloric because it's a Brett team. I I want the Bretts to go because the Bretts would actually have a much better time against Thomas T. 
um, than any other spot where the Bretts could show up. I think <laughs> we, we definitely interesting of a match. We, we need to get this Bretonian not making playoffs thing sorted. We got to get one in there. Um, yeah, he's got Arthur Pendragon, and mm. he's, uh, he's he's kind of got him dinged at the same time. <laughs> now Arthur Pendragon is famous for always look. Uh, he didn't actually ding him, it seems, or maybe he did earlier in the season. But Arthur Pendragon is incredibly famous for rolling ridiculously good level ups and then promptly dying. Yeah, the first Arthur Pendragon... So originally, Arthur Pendragon played for Reese, who were the last Bretonian team to make the playoffs, which is cool if this team then make it. There's a lot of history there, isn't there? There's a lot right? of cool story. So the first Arthur Pendragon was strength five. And then he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He died. He died. And then the next one rolled plus strength, so he was strength four, and then died. Um... So then Arthur Ben Dragon thought, no, right, maybe strength isn't going to work. Let's roll Aji. And then uh, didn't he really roll Aji and then strength and then die? And then this is the fourth one that just rolled Aji without no, the strength? I think this is the third one still. But this one, instead of dying, just transferred to America. Which <laughs> I think might be the same thing. I don't know. Um, it, it, might, it might be his saving grace. <laughs> It's a night three agi up nights. Like you can do a lot with Bretonians that have three agi up nights, even if you don't have anything else. I'm ready for him to get dump off. Like mm. he doesn't have anything else on this team other than the knights. I mean, I know Bretonians are kind of like a you put a lot on the knights, and then kind of put skills where you where you can get them on everything else. But this isn't just a lot on the knights. The team is the, the four knights. Mm. And one skill blocker. Um, I'd like him to win. I think I, did, I do give the Wood Elves a decent shot, though. Um, the Mighty Blow Tackle being out for the game. Um, and they're due. You can't keep Wood Elves down forever. But, um, but we want yeah, the Battle Brothers to go through. Sorry, I do. Shadora. I do want them to come through. I do want them to come through. Not to entirely sleep on Shadora's uh, Street Sharks, but uh, let's quickly go through them and then let you guys make your pick. Um, but they are uh, Frenzy Tackle Block Saurus, uh, Blodge Guard Saurus, a Strength 5 Saurus with Mighty Blow, Break Tackle, and Tackle. But uh, he's also seen better days. He's movement busted. And uh, arm busted. Niggled. An arm busted, yeah. Right. I, um, yeah, let's talk quickly about the fact that one Saurus is dead, two Saurus are armor busted. It's kind of. They're not doing that wall of Strength 4 AV9 anymore particularly well. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be tough. He's got the cash to replace it. No, but. random boy, we were saying it's out against the Wood Elves for game 13, which is key. Mm. Yeah. But either of those opponents, uh, I'm guessing you guys are going to be backing Thomas T. Assuming he makes it, yeah. I think he'll do well. I tend to agree. I think it'll be fun matches, but, uh, you know, Shador will put up a good fight. Thomas T's a pretty good coach with a good I team. think Calaric, if he goes through, will put up an interesting game. Uh, It'll I, be fun. I'm excited to see uh, to see uh, the great return of of Arthur Pendragon at the playoffs. So, it'd be a good story. Where are you going with this one, uh, Crusader? Uh, elves, if they're against uh, lizards, Bretonians, if they make it through. Cool. That doesn't help so much, but okay, we'll take it. Onwards. We're Onwards, almost halfway everyone's... through, right? And eat a reborn. Yeah, we 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 need to pick up the pace slightly. I think we need about an hour per per, per, per corner. And we're just a little behind that. We may be a little bit faster than that. It's, okay. it's going to go long. So we're going to go quickly over to Big O and Antita Reborn. I don't know who that is, uh, but he looks like Orcs. Uh, Antita Reborn. Yeah, Orcs, uh, 4A, uh, 8 4 and O for the season. Got one game left, I believe. Uh, plus 12 for his touchdown difference. Again, it's another sort of, it's another one season Orc team. Um, mm. So personally feel it can do a bit longer in the oven, get a bit more cooked. Block on a troll's yeah. nice. That's nice. Yeah, I... Hmm. Their opponents are the miners? The miners. That's jump. correct, and there's also there's a chance uh, my mate Aaron, another Australian, uh, could go through. I think he's got his... Sure, he's Aussie, Aussie Viking, right? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, but True, uh, True Blue is carving a path through the uh, miners at the same time. Yeah, he's got to play against Dark Elves um, on today <laughs> for me. Um, so that'll be an interesting game, Chores versus Dark Elves. But uh, yeah, Ozzy uh, already I... lost Crusader. Ozzy lost last night. Oh, did he play already? 
Oh, in that case, then I don't know who he's going to play against as a minor champion. So True Blue is the minor champion? No, because he's got to play Lizards in the finals. Is oh, it right, True Blue sorry. in client, or the True Blue, or... I can't remember. But I can find him up real quick, if he actually shows up. Oh, apparently that Brett versus Woody game is on right now. This actually seems like the best chance we've ever had of a Miners team getting a win. Does anyone know what the, the bloody playoffs? hell True Blue's team name is called? Because I cannot remember for the life of me. This seems like the lowest seeded team that a Miners... Wow, there's team three playoff deciding matches going on right now, and Gerber is 1-0 up against Thomas. How rude of them that they're all going in at the same time. Um, and the True Blue. The True Blue, yeah, but what the hell is his team name called? On the subject of that Orc team, while you're doing this, um, it's, it seems to have a lineman who hogs all the MVPs. Yeah, uh, where is he? Three MVPs? I mean, he's got an Orc blocker that's picked up four. Um, I have news from Gerber's match against Thomas. Because Gerber has the ball again. Oh, God. And Jeez, Thomas is going to lose this game. That's actually him losing. What? Most likely. Why am I, why am I getting FU'd, Shadora? Is Shadora like a million miles behind? Mm hmm. Maybe. No, I, I think he's. I think he's thinking about the uh, orc team. But uh, yeah, I, I, I have enjoyed Anti Reborn playing his orc team. Um, but as I said, I think it's a little undercooked at this point in time. Yeah, and this, if it is true blue, that goes through. He did lose a blitter in. I actually watched Sean Man cast the end of his the most of his game, where he played the undead who won against the chaos that we cast the other night, Crusader, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he did a dodge with a blitz with a blitzer who had blodge guard and agi four or something similar. I was dodge guard, dodge and agi four. I don't know if I had guard, and it died, which was sad. That's a human team that's definitely set up to beat an orc team. Um, I would be very nervous in the orc shoes. I think this might have the talent, and certainly true blue is incredibly aggressive. Like he went up two nil on the undead's drive. Yeah. I like, think that's a, uh, that's a in statement. That, to be fair, whoever ends up taking that G-man spot from Thomas T is going to be quite happy with the way the brackets look. I think so. It could well be infectioning. I kind yeah. of feel it could be Gaudi. Oh, Gaudi has this habit of making it, doesn't he? He has he this habit of making it out of nowhere and then not not going very far, right. but making. But it. I've spoke to Gaudi this season, and he's aware of his failings. Let's say. And he's kind of, he's decided to play, to change up his style. And he's decided he's going to start playing around never taking his foot off the gas. And certainly he played insanely aggressive against me. Um, so it was a very different Gaudi I saw on the pitch in our game this season than I've ever seen from Gaudi before. So I, w I would not sleep on him. Uh, I can confirm that Gerber has beaten Thomas. Oh. Poor Thomas. Right. True Blue, I think, beats the Orcs. Anyone else got anything to say, opinion-wise? I think I'd agree with that. I agree. I do, too. Let's shift on to the next bit of the I, I wouldn't hate seeing a minus champ go past the first round, being honest. It, it, it would it would be good for, to it'd be a good look. Let's get the next mm. bracket up. So we're going to kill top right, top right, and we're going to go to bottom left. Does anyone need to take a break at any point to refill drinks or run the toilet or anything? Yeah. Okay, good. We'll throw up a break. We're halfway through, uh, just a little bit over two hours, so we'll take about three minutes. Um, yeah, three minutes is great. Just to run, I'll I'll put some music in the background or something. We'll be right back, gentlemen.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should be back up. So I'm going to bring the call back up. They can't hear me. And then, and then stains on the pitch. Oh, for God's sake, we said it. Right when I bring the flipping. <laughs> I hate you. These scamming are going to just be beating them and beating them all game. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, it shows like this, so maybe you actually want to take part in a league. I just can't bother with Reddit and Discord. It's, it's that in it. Uh, everyone, we come back and everyone knows what we're talking about. Keeping it classy <laughs> there, gentlemen. Well done. Well done. Right. So, you know we're in got. the third corner of the bracket. And I don't necessarily think... We're going to briefly look at a team that I don't think necessarily think is going to take the bye week anymore. Yeah, no, nor do I. Nor do I. But I'm going to look uh, at them very... anyway, because we do like enjoying a little bit of suffering from, from the top, don't we? I know everyone's taken <laughs> great satisfaction in the fact that I my my, so I, my team got beaten up last week by... Uh, Manus. It's a, it's a diminished Papanasi. He makes playoffs. We don't quite know where. But he is diminished. He lost two legends. He did uh, to Underworld for all those who aren't in know. Of course, one of those legends was a Blitzer. The other one was a Strength 4 Orc Thrower. Uh, but yeah, Papanasi's had a uh, he's had a good season. 8-2-3 uh, with 10 touchdowns in his favor. Uh, still has three legends to his name. Um, which is probably one too many, I suppose. Papanasi is making a very good point that he, he, getting as many games in as humanly possible uh, to act during the playoffs might actually allow him to grab up some extra gold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but the thing, the thing, is, the thing is, though, like, he went into his last game at 2,600 TV. Uh, he lost about 440 or thereabouts, and he's back down to like 2,160. It'll be very important for him to not take any additional damage. Uh, Absolutely. Right. I Absolutely. feel I feel like like and I don't want to be that guy and I'm not like starting the fight with the big O again and stuff and I don't want to take shots at Papa Nasty. But I feel like the the this team is on a knife edge. We're we're here, right? We're on the blade of the knife. If he takes any more casualties that stick, it really could topple into a spiral. Yeah, yeah. you and I have just you and I Orcs discussed. Don't really spiral. It's a twenty one hundred <laughs> team value orc team. It's fine. No, I'm saying but but don't orcs don't really spiral, but there. orcs that orcs that lean on these players. He won't be able to win as many games next season, but he's not gonna But isn't isn't spiral. That from someone who turns up at playoffs every season going, Hi, it's me again, I've got I've got all the orcs to to, to not win getting to playoffs potentially. Isn't that he's a got... spiral of its own? He's got three he's... blodge black orcs. Come on. Yeah, his biggest yeah. problem is if he takes in like... casualties, he can't afford to replace them. I'm not because saying not it's going to happen. Casualties. I'm not you're, being you're... the prophet of doom. I'm saying there's a risk. This team doesn't go down to a sniper. This team only goes down to a nuke. And <laughs> yeah. there, there isn't a nuclear option here. <laughs> well, Gnadic brought one. Yeah, the sniper took out a couple hits, and that was nice. But uh, it's still a twenty-one hundred orc team. Like I say, <laughs> like I just, I just fear that that we may end up in a world where next season it's it there's no bash incorporated in playoffs, right? Uh, we need to we need to point out here that how stupid it is that Papanasi lost what like three hundred and fifty SPP on two mm -hmm. players, and he's still it's above TV two thousand. Yeah, right. <laughs> You can beat the team, you just can't kill the team. I mean, I mean, I mean you say that, but Gedenic took a good shot, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Traditionally what, happens with Papa... <laughs> Traditionally what happens with Papa Nasty is he uh, takes an injury, uses his Zappo, and then doesn't take another injury all game. Or it's all bad because it's in MNGs. Yeah, it was not the case in uh, the Gedenic game. So, like, he, his problem is he's not had cash to replace anything all season if it's died. I think he might have been able to replace a lineman here or there. But that's his biggest concern right now is that he's still still in spiraling expenses and shit is expensive. <laughs> yeah. He's got a line orc that's better than every one of his black orcs. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're going to move on. Uh, no, absolutely, Papa Nasty. I mean, I've embraced the bloat in a similar fashion. I started, I picked up a cheerleader and an assistant coach the other week. Because why not at this point, yeah? Um, right. We're going over to G-Man. Is it Mego? Because if it is, I'm really happy that it's Mego. Right, so we're talking G Man six. I do like um, when well, I when I lead in Haring Zod and you instantly give me the division. 
Certain yeah. other regions could get better at that. Hey, I tell you the divisions. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> if, it, if it's a division worth knowing. Right, so Ooh. it will either be Mego or Preswilfer because they face each other. Was it not Mixedly? Was there not a well, talk no, of Mixley, it being Mixley? Mixley is now top of the table. Yeah. Oh, so it's but not if Mego top spot. Yeah. gets a tie, then Mego is top of the table. Right. Mego is currently second. So if you want to look at second place, you've got to look at Mego right now, right? Okay. Um, but if he loses to Preswilfer, then Preswilfer is in second place. Now, I've played Mego a lot, you see, which is kind of... I'm not being biased at all, but I have played Mego a couple of times when he was playing his dwarves before he went shows, and we had some ridiculously silly games. So I kind of want it to be Mego. Sorry, Preswilfer. Uh, I'm not being horrible. We'll, 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 we'll assume... For now. That's a fairly dead Jorf team. Uh, you say that, but I mean, it's still got like the strength for Claw Mighty Blow. Yeah, but that's that's two seasons old, and it's one Bull Sentinel, hmm. and that's not in great shape. It's not one particularly good Bull Sentinel, is it? <laughs> you know? No. So that's not one that you'd put your house on going too far in the competition. Hmm. Um... That being said, obviously, like you said, strength four claw mighty blow is is decent. You'll take that when given the chance. Yeah, but the question is, right, and this is a team, his opponent. There's not much to talk about with Mego's team, but he's a good he's a good coach. Come up from the minors for the rookies. Uh, I've played him a lot. Uh, so he knows his blood bowl. He's been at Div One in G Man, I believe, one for mm. one entire season until it died his yeah, team yeah. died. Um his opponent is someone I was quite surprised again to see on the, Four. On the list. It's Rel 4. But he's made it not only onto the list of playoff coaches. Harringzod, you nominated this guy as one of the, the 10 best teams around Rebel. Ten yeah, he's had a brilliant teams. season. He surprised me as well with how well he's done. Um, but he's on the shortlist for the the team of the season. Um, the cause... Film Flayers. Mm. And I'm going to take this opportunity to say, if you haven't nominated your coaches for the, uh, we call them the Nufflies, the Rebel <laughs> Awards, mm -hmm. Please do take... It only takes five minutes. I did it earlier. Um, please do take five minutes to, to nominate it. It's, it's, it's just good fun. and maybe we'll... We've actually had 70 responses in the 10 hours since I posted the thing. And maybe we'll get some you know games out. Or I've got a stack of game codes I can probably start shipping out to people as well as, as small thank yous as the prizes. Mm. So we can do something there. Anyway, tell us about them, uh, Superbad. Yeah, Holes has ran the gamut of Div 4 and done very, very well. The only game he actually lost was against O-Rabbi, which I hinted at earlier. Um, and that was a game where he got pitch cleared but didn't take any real damage. So to do the only damage that he could, O-Rabbi ran in the touchdown. Um, <laughs> the team does so well because, well, let's just face it, they're very, very, very stacked on their werewolves with claw, palm, tackle, jump up and Mighty Blow, Tackle, Dodge. Um, basically, two perfect werewolves, in my opinion. Sure, they don't have stat-ups, but they don't really need them. I mean, it's one of them's got a stat down. Yeah. Yeah, which makes him immune to claw. That's right. <laughs> um, and then we've got uh, the Ghoul here, um, which is also very good with Agi up and movement up. Um, Neo is, is quite the Ghoul. As long as he stays alive throughout the rest of the playoffs, he's going to be a big help. Um, not the best Flesh Golem development, I will say. Uh, it would be worth his time to try and run in a touchdown on Gorgeous George, uh, which I think is the most common name in all of Rebel. <laughs> um, but to get guard on that would be a big help. The Whites are pretty solid, though. John McClane and Han Solo doing work, and he does have a guard zombie to round things off. As someone, as someone in a position of power, I am very glad to see uh, people playing the paying their flesh, flesh golem taxes. We do like it when people are up to date on their taxes around here. <laughs> <laughs> and he's paid them, hasn't he? Yeah, it's a nice team, though. It's a really nice team, and like you say, Holes has had a stormer of a season. So there's a very real chance that Hulk, that Mego is just going to go. Yeah, I'm not ready. Is he going to be tapping for Uncle, or is he going to win, Harrisod? Mm, I mean, those wolves are pretty scary for Mego, aren't they? Although, the armor value 7 on Lassie, if he's willing to get his Fowlin boots out, he'll have a few inducements, could maybe pick up some bribes. Um, perhaps a dirty player mercenary. You never know. Get a hold of that wolf. 
you know, give it a gammy leg or something, and you'd be you'd be fine. <laughs> Tough one to see him winning though. Yeah, it's it's a roughie. Agreed. Uh, at Superfed, I think Harrington just made your argument for you, hasn't he? Yep. So is that a is that just a straight win? Just a straight win. Yep. Crusader, any hope for the Charles? Yeah, I'm... No, I'm going with the uh, Necro here. Ah, oh, that's fair. Sorry, hole. Sorry, hole. Omega. It's all holes at the time. Now, another coach that has surprised me because I I like this guy. I he's been in the playoffs before, but he has a habit of being a little bit sloppy at times. But his you team, just like his player names. But his team is fantastic, and I'm on it these days. So, <laughs> am I on it? I'm not on it. I was supposed to be on it, and then didn't end up on it. So, I think he's buying a beastman named after me at some point because he was asking for the name. No, you'll do. You'll do. Yeah, back end blowout. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this is also a team with a meme, um, which I always love to share in these events. Uh, the meme is that. Uh, he is a great coach on turns 1 through 14. But on turn 15, he is arguably one of the worst coaches. And he turns into a human Labrador and is just happy to be here and wagging a tail. <laughs> and this is what I mean. He's thrown some of the best games and the worst ways. Uh, yeah. You got to be careful when you're playing Stubings. Yeah, he, 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 helped, he helped Gengar get through in the playoffs last season by... By the absolute worst turn 15 and 16 I think I've ever seen in my entire time casting Blood Bowl. <laughs> He's done it a couple times since, too. So, I hope he makes the playoffs, if only to see the meme continue. So, what what you're saying is, if he tightens up, right? If he finds the, the magic in the fifth turn 15 and 16, he's probably unbeatable, right? He'd be a very good coach, yeah. Now, is he unbeatable? Because he's got a team that might be able to beat him. Was, mm. It was a, it was a terrible. I'm sorry, Harry's I didn't give you much to work with. There. Guess what? We got a nonsense rat. Where is he from? This is a good nonsense rat. HC. This is a nonsense rat with an upgrade. <laughs> nonsense rat 2.0. <laughs> mm. I, I love it, uh, that this 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 coach's team name as well. <laughs> all rats must die. Yeah. Um, but watch out for Bolt Witness because he's he's a natty one turner with AG5. So this is, this is a one-player team. Bleh. It is, yeah. This is absolutely a one-player <laughs> team. This is, good. this is horrible. It's so good. <laughs> there, there is very... I mean, the big hand, sure hands, block, gutter runners, nice. But the storm vermin are terrible. Yeah. And I think they, it's because they finally team. had a game a couple of weeks ago. I only They only kind of turned up on my radar at some point the other week when about four of their players died in one match and I was like oh, at least they're living up to the team now but they are going to get a ton of inducements for this game and ton. and they've got memes in their, in their favour mm. can Superfed can Stubings hold it together versus the most filthy gut runner we've seen all night the rats don't decide whether or not this game is won or lost it is entirely in Stubings court if the rats watch the Lumi game, uh, I'm sure they could learn a couple things that uh, Lumi versus Stubings I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they could learn a few things to possibly exploit. Um, Stubings does very good in the bash matchups and the positioning game. Uh, this rat team certainly is capable of an upset, uh, especially when you know you don't have to do anything on defense and just run the ball in on turn Tomo, eight. Tomo has just proved, made a, a fantastic point as well there, is that they are absolutely terrifying in overtime format because if you win the toss, sure. you pretty much win the game, right? Yeah. And, and I have he said could... before, I've been known, I've, I've been on record before to say, natural one-turners very much feels like they're so good at generating draws. Yeah. He could just straight Golgoth in it where he lines up on his own zone and waits until turn eight to then do the one turn and then on turn nine does another one turn and lines up on the end zone on turn 10 and go to overtime and win the coin toss and win the game that easy that's all you have to do when you've got that player and is that what he'll be doing herring Zod? yeah <laughs> he's got 31 points this season doing that so i don't see what's going to stop him now <laughs> uh crusader is it rats or is it stubings uh Natural one turners, man. 
they are a terrifying thing. Um, there is only 11 rats. I suppose you might pick up a couple of... Uh, I mean, there's only 11 rats, but there's so many inducements. There's not 11 rats. No, that's what I'm saying. But, like, it, it's all about protecting that one turner. As long as he can do that, he stands a very good chance of winning the game. So I guess it's probably just down to Stubing as to whether or not he wants to win it or not. Just as a point as well, um, it's been confirmed to yourself right that um, the Lumi result means that Stubing's, Lazarus, and Sace are all now confirmed. Are they locked in this position, though? They're not locked in positions, but they're okay, locked for that, playoffs, definitely. That's what I was more hinting at, I guess. No, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good spot to be in. <laughs> right, speaking of good Except... spots to be in, uh, this is a coach that's not, I think, necessarily lived up to their potential at times. And <coughs> I'm kind of glad to see them turn up in, in playoffs. It's uh, Again, it's, by it, the way. It's the other, the other animal farm, farm animals kind of team. Yes. Uh, Chabsu and the farm animals. Uh, this is the third iteration of Rel, top Rel Chaos. Div where? So if you've got Animal Farm, well, they're in Div 3. Um, so if uh, Animal Farm and Sace is the old school, Stubings is the new school, this would be the kindergarten. <laughs> um, <laughs> or preschool. There's a lot of chaos coming into the playoffs this season. I keep seeing it. Ca- There's a lot of chaos and a lot of rats and a lot of necro. And not much of anything else? No, there's a lot of chaffs as well. Oh, yeah. So many chaffs. Oh, God. Yeah. We're about to have that debate where Claw wins Eternal Leagues again, aren't we? Well, this is, well, that's probably true. But this team in particular has not had the attrition of the other two. Um, and so they're looking very, very healthy. Um, but they also don't have the experience. Um, and I'm hoping to see who they're up against and how many sidestep players they have. Because that'll probably tell you which way I lean. Um, self, TF Self saying, if Chab fails to win and he wins, he loses his spot and Self can come back to playoffs. It's true. I, I don't uh, know if playoffs can afford the budget required for the loners that TF Self needs. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's blown the budget through the season, hasn't he? He hasn't mm. saved enough. Spoonie enough Bard does hold the fate of T Self in his hands. His little tiny goblin mutated hands but we'll look at we'll look at this as as it stands for now and then we'll all get messed up when we this is another rel on rel as well so there's gonna be some rel on rel violence because chabsu has to take on vulps in culta hmm. ah yes the boss hog outlaws which are in 10 yeah, no the d 10 d oh god we're given we're given a 10 d coach to chabsu mm-hmm Oh well, it was it was and nice not knowing a... your vulps. And there's no sidestep, so I think Chabsu will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily uh, get the meme, but uh, Chabsep's worst games are, are uh, has been against basically sidestep. Would be what I'm getting at. Mm. He just he hasn't been very good at predicting where they're going to sidestep to, or when they sidestep against the ball, you know, getting them off the ball. I, I want to spend some time on Vulps and Coulter's team, but I'm, I'm unsure how much of it's going to be left by the end of the first game. Yeah, they've got some uh, guard, mighty blow, guard, mighty blow, guard, mighty blow, and mighty blow, and... Uh, strength? Strength. And that's, the Bulls are pretty good for a season. The Bulls are pretty to good. To be fair, that's the best one-season Chorf team we've seen. No, Wedge is better. It's the second best <laughs> team that we've seen. Come on, is is there a world where Vulps can can do this? Uh, maybe, but the dice have got to be friendly, any... right? Oh. Yeah. It basically, it's the same odds as a regular dwarf team beating Chaos at 2000 TV. I, I don't think I like it. Sorry, Vulps. I don't yeah. think I like your chances. Which would then lead to Chabsu versus Stubians, which is going to be really fun. So that'll we'll be that that'll goes. be memey as all hell, won't it? That'll be so it really well. It really well. Now speaking of memey as all hell, we've given you've given me a great segue there. Thank you for that, Superfed. You hooked me up. All right, we've got one of the silliest build. Uh, he's famous for it, isn't he, uh, Crusader? It's one way to put it. <laughs> certainly, <laughs> certainly one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Warecaster and his undead, the Phobias Reborn, 10 to 1 and plus 13 on the touchdowns. But look at him. They're like, 
They're like so silly. <laughs> I, I want to point out that uh, the mummy that currently only has guard used to have strength six, and then was strength busted. Um, and you weren't yeah. seen for a week because you went off to uh, to jerk it like a champ. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, well, you know, because <laughs> you uh, love that kind of thing, don't you? Yeah, uh, that's his second frenzy zombie. Um, and yeah, I <laughs> it's fucking weird, caster. I don't know, He's man. He's never seen a level up that he didn't like. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, Interestingly, uh, this is one of my teams for Rebel Rebel. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because it's so bizarre. I mean, it's got, like, our X-75 gun tank, the Dauntless block. Dauntless first, before things like block, and then mm. Frenzy, and... Well, oh. I need an undead team. And, and the ghoul. Strip all. Only undead team. Strip movement leap tackle not enough strip ball <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's and the I, multi yeah, block I, I mean, mummy i mean i've been not sure what to make of this team the whole season but i mean where cast has made it work uh he has zero fear of gfis as well as man throws multiple I, gfis I, on, on the same turn I it's feel just like, incredible i feel like this is the team that you take when you're like going to play up against a dozen people that have never played Blood Bowl before. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like I was I'm about to say something similar. You. In that... That, that is not a very nice way to describe the rest of the Big O Division 2. Ooh. <laughs> I, he, he's, you you know, said he's it. Thing, like, you said it, not me. Here's the thing. Every, he, he's lost one game all season. He's drawn two. So it's almost like every person he's played against has, yeah, absolutely. He's just like, mm. I feel what like, I right, and, and I, I mean, no offense to Warecaster when I say this. But I feel like... Yeah, no, it is an insane manus. It's two chance, two chances to turn you over in a turn rather than one. Just what everyone wants on their big guys. He used to have two strength six mummies, right? Yeah, he What's, did. Yeah. Right. And my you argument is, the block, so you just my stand argument there and is, push him away from you. If he doesn't know what he's doing from turn to turn, there's no possible way his opponent can. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, I, like, Warecaster where, where where plays fast and loose... And he all he will literally all literally hunt down everything on the pitch. My favorite. He, he game, will he will run after it and try and kill it. My favorite Warcaster game is uh, it, it, he was playing Kimri and I was playing goblins, and uh, <laughs> it was the best goblin game I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna just yeah. quickly looking for this ramp up team by judging. I can do it this way, it's fine. It, yeah, okay. Ex so, Excess is right, he's struggled against high strength and mass great. guard teams. He's struggled against high strength. It's a good job that he's not playing Lizard. Oh, wait. No, he's History playing History lessons. Uh, by the way, this is a 1600 TV one season Lizard team. It's actually ramp up, so it's a bit less than one season. Um, but this is the team that It's beat... actually, Herring's odd, precisely one season. It was one of our first ever ramp up teams. Okay. Because it's actually well, anyway, 13 games, so... This is the team that beat the Skaven team that would have stopped Larkstar winning the division. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're saying he's struggling against high strength, I mean, he's against high strength. What are we feeling, gentlemen? Is this going to be Warecaster pulling these, Warecaster magic, or is it going to be... These lizards have dinosaur DNA, and they are growing fast. I don't. I don't see how they lose. For a thirteen game, I, game I team, mean, I do. Where Cast has got two strip ball players. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's so true. And one of them's got a leap on a four plus. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> he's, 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 he's act, he did more more leaps with that thing than he's failed too, which is the funniest thing about it. But yeah, like I I think Warecaster and he's just insanity could actually pull this one out of the bag. I think it's going to be the least boring Undead versus Lizards we've ever seen in playoffs. This, yeah. could, be, this could be HUD-worthy. Um, yeah. yeah. Because, because this, tackle. this coach does not give up, so... Who? There's no tackle on this Lizard team. Those ghouls are just going to hunt down those skinks and strip ball them and tackle them and, and just be like... Just be menaces. So, is anyone in favour of charging all stake in this one? I think so. Mm, not quite, but... There's no Agi 4. 
for Warecaster. So that diving tackle blodge player is a legit threat. Sidestep diving tackle as well. He's got those skinks, four yeah. diving tackle. Those those skinks are legit tack like diving tackle threats. On yeah, those but I mean, Warecaster has tackle and this. But 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 super fed. You can't diving tackle against a four plus leap ghoul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. am gonna predict an overtime win for Warecaster. I feel like Warecaster's strategy is he's a little bit mental and no one can really truly predict what he's about to do. So what he kind of does is he drags everybody else down into the chaos with him, and then wins because he lives there. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right, so he's gonna win the Super Bowl then. I don't know if you'll get, I don't know if his chaos <laughs> is that strong, but it's fairly strong, right? We're jumping over. Is it? Is it actually excess? Because I don't think it's excess, is it? I want it's it to excess, be excess or sand dune. I want it to be excess, but I've I've heard rumors that it's not excess. It's excess, excess. or sand dune. One of those two. Specifically yeah, excess. In this he has a hope. He has a hope, but he needs uh, he needs stark weather, which is he needs stark weather to step up and beat sand dune, but that's. That's a fucking crapshoot. Who knows what's yeah, going to happen? Yeah, but he can man. he can rely on a draw. A draw is no good for Sanju. So shall yeah, we shall we work true. that it's with that it's excess because I want it to be excess yeah, come back to playoffs as well. I, I would like it to be, XS and I well. like this orc team. It's actually a nice. It's not the world's most developed orc team, but I I, I kind of like it. I mean, it's it's not the world's most developed orc team because excess tends to take a couple of casualties here and there. Like his black orcs have been through the ringer. Uh, recent times, but yeah, I, it, it, it's going in places I like. He's getting, he's got stand firm. He's got guard. He's getting mighty blow. He's getting, you know, the block where it needs to be. Um, he's now got a couple of black orcs that are extremely close to leveling. Uh, I gave him a level up on a lineman, which I'm not sure what he rolled. I think it was a normal. So it was Gronk two. I, I don't know what Gronk two's got. Block, block. There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. An excess player is just a good. Why does he have a plus muscle. movement lineman? Why not? He's got plus movement yeah. everywhere else. He might as well, right? <laughs> he doesn't lose the matches I would expect him to lose, nor does he win the matches I would expect him to win. Uh, it was. Can we talk about how he he lost the last time he was in playoffs in possibly yeah. the worst fashion humanly possible? He needs to redeem that, doesn't he? He needs to get back to playoffs so he can get rid of that. Lis Liscaris and Viking Cop both got on our radar from playing the silliest game. I think I cast it with T, and it was stupid. The win, he essentially lost the game because he didn't click follow. <laughs> because then he got the ball carrier sacked, and it scattered into a beastman's hands who was stood in the end zone providing an assist. Who kind of just went what, and then grabbed the ball. Yeah, I, I know XS is very hungry for the playoffs as well. I. Think if he if he if he does get there, I expect him to put in a very good showing. He'll 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 make a good account of himself. I love Bulldozer Sean. It's such a good, well built bl blitzer. I love it, love it, love it. So there's that. Uh, he's gonna be playing. Is it mixed? It's mixedly in it, pretty much. This one is mixedly. Yeah, he won today. And this is G Man something. Six again. Six again. If we've been there once, I've looked at this team and then forgot it existed. And it's down here. It is the animals. And it's a human team. And it's it's an okay, it's a pretty good human team. Not the best. Earlier, the worst. <laughs> Earlier I said there was a human team that was set to be a orc team. This is an orc team that's set to destroy a human team. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I don't think it's quite ready, is it? Is it Horizon? Um, is it ready? Is it? It's no. got I... an undeveloped auger. It's it's throwers gone very off. That's well, right. So that's eighteen fifty team value, but I'm not seeing a lot for my eighteen fifty. It has got sixty k in the bank as well. Are you, are you factoring that? Oh, true. Yeah. So it's eight. It's seventeen ninety. It's still that's still, which is still a lot. <laughs> And I'm not seeing enough for my 1790 on a human team. Although he has quite a lot of guard, which will help against orcs. But so does the orcs. Well, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, got no, no a bomb, very good so even if he breaks armor, it's just going to be stuns. Like, I, I don't 
I don't see it. I want to. I actually want to give a huge pat on the back to XS. He beat Papa Nasty two 0 and he agi busted what you, plus agi blitzer. Yeah, what do you think was, this human team is going to do to him? Yeah, he's played much scarier, hasn't he? That's I think that's the argument yeah. you're making. He's he's looked into the eyes of scarier teams and not flinched. He's looked into the abyss and just went whatever. All you need to remember is to press follow. <laughs> <laughs> Humans, are, I have to out agi bash and I have to out bash agi. Well, they don't have the agi tools to out agi the orcs here. They've got accurate. You know, one of the anti players is movement busted, which really doesn't help. Right. Right. I just sorry, Lascaris. I don't think even winning the Super Bowl will put that one behind you, mate. <laughs> anyway, like Liam and his follow. Oh God! Oh God! Push it! Push that! Who's, who's gonna win? <sighs> it's 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 all Lascaris all day, right? Yeah, I, I've got to back my co cast my you know my co caster and co recapper excess. I he's gonna give himself a great account here. I think he'll go. I think he'll do well. Thanks for coming. Take your swag bag on the way out. You know what? What G Man One's good at producing? Uh, yeah, winning Oops. Skaven teams that have no Skaven on them. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those teams, ladies and gentlemen, that ninety percent of its ma- players <laughs> play history as loners. <laughs> He actually fired a killer today, uh, and I kind of feel like he shouldn't have because I think it deserved better, and also because he was against Hippie and uh, sending it out in a body bag is fine by me. But yeah, Sean Man mm. is an insane, insane dude because he's playing with this <laughs> and winning. Do more of his players have stat busts than stat busts than not? Am I looking at that right? Yes. Yeah, he's got injuries everywhere. He 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 had. A, a, well, it was double niggled minus armor storm vermin that he just sacked. I think it was. Yeah, it was two niggles and an armor bust. This guy's one niggle. <laughs> it's uh, there's not a lot of them, is there? It's got a ninety one turner though. It's got uh, yeah, it's got an injured ninety one turner. It's only armor value six. If it does fail that GFI, it's a uh, bad news bears. Now, this team has been into the playoffs in all three seasons that it's existed now. Yeah. Um, but what Turned we kind of did was shot it into the sun and it had a great time <laughs> in the first two seasons, but now it's kind of arrived at the sun and is horribly on fire. I had an interesting game against this team, right, where basically, because of the natural one turn, I was desperately trying to... Cl- it was like Vermintide, right? He had something like five... Lona line rats, and then he hired another five or something stupid like that. Mm. So I literally he gave me an absolute army of like nine Lona line rats that I had to fight through. So it wasn't five; it was four or something stupid. And basically, I was it was like I was just trying to cast my way through wave after wave of line rats to get to the ones that mattered, because both of his storm vermin had been MNG the previous game by Gaudi. Um, and then every single injury I put on him went on an existing player rather than despite having nine Lona line rats the only players I hurt were his existing players a lot of the other <laughs> rats that I've been saying I'm not going to predict partially because they are not going to be as experienced with inducements they just aren't playing big TV gaps this team is so experienced with inducements that it's also a meme <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's no big rat. He's promised uh, us. He's promised actually live on stream today that if he makes it to the Super Bowl and has the inducements, he's hiring big rat. Ornan, what have you done? <laughs> um, I just this team has a, so much experience with inducements that I would favor them. Where even though they're a little bit more banged up than all the other rats we see, they've got a very good blitzer. They're going to know how to use Glort. They're going to know how to use an infinite army of rats. Hackflam you know, has made an appearance. That. Skit has made at least two. Yeah. I, 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 it's in bad shape, but I like it. Sean Mann was very excited to induce Hackflam today, and then he died on turn three. <laughs> <laughs> it was something new for him. I think he's had... I think Sean Mann is the only rat coach that's had just about every rat superstar killed on the pitch. Um, I'm just going to put in more because asking for the Toast Guy result. It's about to be 1-1 one, one at half time with Toast Guy's opponent to receive the ball, right. assuming he doesn't 1-9 this block 
which he promptly doesn't. This is someone I don't know, so you're gonna have to help me out here, Superfed. I'm digging. I'm it's digging. It's Jaspersaurus Rex. Anyone? Well, it might be, but it's a stupid close division 10A. It, yeah, 10A, and it's uh, with a rebel yell. Is, like it, the name. is it them? Is it because they're joint with uh, Harry and Coos? Literally, common so order. all we these, split them. There's, there's five teams that are at 12 games played, and all are within three points of each other. So when they don't we're going to look other. at this team, because I have no idea how to tell them. Yeah, we, I think we're just going to have to wait. And the, we're the never going to get this one accurate, are we? Are both six six zero and have touchdown differences of eight. They're likely to go through. I feel like this is the what happened to Warecaster the first time he tried to build them dead, and then went, "Now nah, that's far too boring." <laughs> it's too sensible. This this is too sensible for me. Yeah, far too sensible. But we're in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where the G Man One coach still gets inducements against the Ten Air coach. The three-season team is inducing against the one-season team. It's a palm <laughs> mummy. I don't like that. I don't. I don't like the piling on. Sorry. That's just asking to roll more GFIs, which Undead don't fail GFI, but still. Until they do. I'd, forgot, I'd, I'd forgotten that the Wear 6 mummy that Wear Castle lost had palm. It did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Man says his weakness is he doesn't get enough inducements. <laughs> he just... That's probably true. And this one particular matchup, probably true. He's still um... got the Natty One Turner, and he's still got the Claw Palmer. I, I, I don't see. I don't want to be biased again as the host, but I don't see a world where my, 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 my where my uh, G Man One brother is not going to win this. He's got a lot of block. He's got a lot of zombie bloat. He could trim it up, even make those inducements even slimmer. It'll um... be weirdly close. It will. Why is it G Man won second place against a fresh it will. team? And he doesn't have any tackle on this team. So if the POWs and the palm does work, there's a there's a world where he gets through, but even I am pretty certain that Sean Man's got this one. That's fair. I think. That's very fair. Now we're gonna move on. We've got another G Man coach. It's Noru. We we kinda highlighted that they existed earlier. Mm. Uh, because they were doing quite well. Is it two or three? Well, it depends who you want to look at. Do you want to look at Nuro, the Bretts, who might get in? Or do you want to look at Nurgle, Murgle, Urgle? I want to know where they're from. Is it three, in it? Is it's it three? three, yeah. Let's look at Nuru, the Bretts, because... Because <laughs> Nurgle, Murgle, Urgle are very, very likely to win their game against Ninja Breadman's completely dead Amazons. So it's probably going to be the Nurgle. Are they not? Have, has Noru played? Uh, yeah, Noru has played. Uh, well, yeah, it could well be the Nurgle. I don't know. I'd, I'd never really rule Amazons out, especially against Nurgle, who kind of. I would. Have a lot of power. I would rule Ninja Breadman's team almost out. There's like seven of them. Okay, well, we'll give it to the. We'll give it. To, I, I wanted to give it to the Bretts to see another Brett team turn up, but it's going to be more Nurgle in it. Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle. I want to talk about them. Because you just want to say the name a lot, don't you? I do. It's good fun. <laughs> Roll it around a little bit and go, hmm. It's got a very good pest to go for the carrying the ball, considering it doesn't mm. have the obligatory Agi that so many pest have got. I've got so many pretenders to the crown of the Agi pest go now. It's, it's worth pointing out that the, the original beast of Nurgle was called Puppy. Um, and then, obviously, that died and we got Puppy's Puppy. And that died, so we're now on the puppy of puppies, puppy. Right. And I don't know where we go after that, but I want to find out. It's still got block. So it nice. does have block, yeah. There's a lot of good things about this team. As a, as an there is, but there's also... The other little problem is that they were kind of miles ahead in this division. And the wheels have fallen off right at the end of the season, so... I also kind of feel like he gets these really good builds and then turns left at the lights before he finishes them. <laughs> like, what is this killer? Might blow, yeah, good. Tackle, good, yeah. Claw, yeah, good. Block, great. Dodge on a killer. Like, that could have been piling on. Or Juggernaut. Hmm. Uh, things I don't like. It's still, it's a Nurgle team that's pretty well developed. They've been middle of the road for the first two seasons, and in season three, they've come good. <laughs> Yeah, it could have been jump up, as someone said, without piling on. 
that means piling onto your legend, and that's a long time. You're jumping up before you've piled on, which is not necessarily the best. It's a nice looking team, nonetheless. I like the, the Rotter that has. I like this idea. It's something I never thought of if you get it at the second level on a dirty player. But taking two heads so you can dodge out to foul things is actually pretty good. It is, yeah. It works as a concept. We appear to have more chaffs as his opponent. Mm. Where are they from? Mr. Mr. J. We, we, we've talked about this team. The Rouge, not Rogue. Oh, yeah. um, and so I'm going to actually skip over then to what it's most likely going to be, which is the Rage Dwarf. Um, what which Div, is <laughs> Div 6. Oh, I like this team. I, I, I remember I Rage Dwarf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Senor Dorf's dead, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> oh no! You never, you didn't take that well, did you? You didn't no. take that well at all. Um, yeah, I love this team. I, this is great fun. It is. It is I, I uh, really... Senor Dorf's <laughs> back. Oh, there's a new Senor Dorf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but also, Dorfy the Dorf has strength four now. And so does Lord Dorf. <laughs> Lord Dorf the strength four guard. Dodge, Blood. stand for... That's, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. And as as Stakeman just pointed out in chat, Ganondorf might be the best name ever. <laughs> that's good. And quickly, Occupy Japan. There will be no game tonight. It is a playoff cast special, so we can break down exactly what's happening in the Reddit Eternal Blood Bowl League playoff round of 64. So there won't be a match. For some reason, tonight. we don't know. Uh, we kind of do know a lot. Um, I kind of think... We're going back into that whole world where um, dwarves are going to good. claw and, <laughs> and have a bad time. Yeah. Claw's good. Uh, it would be cool if Lord Dorf just pulled a straight up... Um, God, what was his name? Hinder Dejection? The, the Hinder Dejection, yes. Because this is a Hinder Dejection equivalent. Um, it is, isn't with it? With every it's, single skill. It's a Hinder Dejection build. But yeah. faster. And more agile. Which is actually scarier because it can reposition. It's true. Um, so yeah, I would love to see him just shut down the entire push from the Nurgle. But is he, he gonna, is he realistically going to do it? Or is he just going to get clawed in the face and die? And we're going to have skin. we're going to have another another Haring Zord on stream yelling for Senor Dolph again as he goes into the light. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Nurgle 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 will win that. Just Crusader. But... Yeah, I'm going Nurgle. I've seen scarier dwarves. Yeah, but have you seen angrier dwarves? <laughs> yeah, but your scary dwarves can't even make it into the play. I saw what happened the last time Gary came up against a horrible claw team. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go, did it? Right. We're going over to another rel team. Because uh, we're now, actually, that done is... Done with that bracket. Done with that corner of the bracket. We're in the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Boom, get this up. Look how prepared I was. Look how prepared Div I was. Two. Div two. And not only Div two, but almost perennially Div two. And he's the like Duke. If he gets if he gets the wit if he if he doesn't die. If he doesn't die here, he's going to Div one for the first time in in hit rel history. This is a, potentially a big playoffs for Arch Excel. Yeah, he's he used to be my nemesis. Uh <laughs> Arch XL with not an anime sports team, the Archduke of Rel. Um, finally getting a big, big season. Sis bring, that... bringing the one man hype machine in chat there. <laughs> <laughs> um, his team's looking pretty good right now, uh, except for, you know, the meme, which I mentioned earlier. If you uh, were to look at the previous throwers, I mean, um, there's something there's a lot. Suspic suspicious by its absence on <laughs> this team, isn't yeah. it? Literally week 13, he just lost his ninth thrower. Um, which, this one had development. This was Blodge and Surehand, so um, it is a step backwards for sure. Um, he He's leads nice the stats, High Elf though. Discord as well, so if you play a High Elf team, he hunts you down and makes you join his, his uh, Discord. He's just tapped up the one rookie in College League to join as well. It's <laughs> um, but so it's... Uh, you've got a... a Four catchers, um, all of them with some development. Add you five being the fresh project, which is nice. Uh, the straight four wrestle tackle leap is still somehow alive. I tried to kill that thing. Uh, it's movement busted at least. You've got uh, the frenzy piece, which is actually the most dangerous piece on this team. It's very subtle, but uh, 
it actually lays down a lot of casualties. Can I just um, switch back a sec? Shout out to Unseen Walker in chat. If I win tonight and make it to playoffs, I promise to do to that Nurgle team what I did to Manus last season. That's a bold claim. That would be nice. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got a Nerves of Steel movement up catcher, which is really just a one-turner with a little bit of help. Yeah, um, single push, right? Uh, no, two pushes. Yep. Two pushes because he's not sprinting. Two pushes, yeah. yeah. A um, couple guard pieces as well, which will be helpful. Um, not the best blitzers, but one strength up, uh, sure hands one, or strip all one is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it's not so much the team that's scary, it's the play and the players. Uh, he does have just a keen sense for picking apart a team and, and finding where to push. I um I feel like he is definitely like the poster boy for the high flying high elf players, isn't he? As the whole absolutely toss the ball around a lot and score. Everybody's like, hey, I got war dancers, two war dancers. He's like, well, I got, f um, and I will make them far more useful. We're gonna switch over to his opponent, who is another elf team. It's nice, right? Oh god, I went too far out. That's silly of me. I'll have to flick back in there real quick and you can see how many millions of leagues I'm moderating. Um, his oh, opponent is someone we all kind of know. It's AE, I believe. It is, yeah. And he's kind of famous because he happens to be the best Dark Elf team in. Uh, the best Dark Elf coach in the entire country. That'd be yeah. I don't, I don't really know. What I can say about Andy Davo that we haven't already said because he's in the playoffs again and he's playing Dark Elves again. And I mean, he knows what he's doing. This is a man that knows his way around an elf team, right? I mean, he's not technically in because if uh, JJ Cash and his humans can win 14 <laughs> nil, then, <laughs> then he's in instead. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, I, the one thing, the one, the one f fact I like about Andy Davo here is that he thought he was doing well and winning on the uh, touchdowns competition, and then found out that Marker exists. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something of a weird score off between. And he was about ten touchdowns behind and went, oh, <laughs> all right then. <laughs> Basically, um, Andy re-rolled his Dark Elves into Dark Elves because he thought the other Dark Elves were boring and didn't have any interesting players. In, um, that's that's Andy speak for I didn't have enough doubles and stats. Yeah, so now he has like four <laughs> doubles. <laughs> so he's got three guards and he's got well, in fact he's got a strength four mighty blow bludge, chub step. So we need to get him killed off. Um, but it's a, it's a nice looking Dark Elf team. It's one season. It's a TV 1850, and it's coached by Andy. His his rule I've I've actually recently learned is that as an Elf team, you never stop throwing vanity passes ever, even when you're trying to cage. <laughs> if he has the ball at the end of his turn and hasn't turned over by then, he'll toss it to another Elf, because apparently getting 60 in SPP every game, on top of everything else you get, is really good. Hmm. I love so, that there was the argument recently that uh, 1,800 Dark Elf teams just aren't able to compete in playoffs after one season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this team might say hi to that, especially because there's no Nurgle in sight for him to get really, really into trying to surf. And yeah, don't get, hit the Undertaker. And then again. get chucked off the top of hell in the cell by, uh, by the Undertaker <laughs> in the playoffs. Um, this is going to be a good He's game. only had seven surfs this season. That's not that many. That's not Andy Davenport, might have... is it? No, he, he might have learned his lesson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right? who's going to win this? Because I want to move on because the very, very next match is the easily most exciting match we're going to talk about all night. Hmm. So who's going to win? Um, Andy's going to win, although Arch is going to put up a very good fight. Arch is not going to lose this match. I am very confident. Crusader? Uh, if Arch baits Sandy... Uh, Sandy... And into surfing, then Arch wins. So who wins? That's not answering my question. Arch, Arch knows. <laughs> yeah, Arch knows Arch. how to do that. <laughs> I, I, I think it's going to be an incredibly good match. I am so looking forward to that match. Like it's one of my most exciting, uh, one of the most exciting matches I think. But it's not as exciting as the match we're about to cover, <laughs> which features <laughs> this idiot. Then I get to decide. And this idiot. 
<laughs> hey, what? Who made it? <laughs> who's made Is it? it? Like, yeah. like, who's currently in, in qualifying position in this? Crusader, do you want to tell us a little bit about your team? They're Kislev. They go all right. <laughs> is there is there a part inside of you Superfed where you're looking at this team going mm. I play Kislev because I was not satisfied with the way that I was seeing other Kislev built however he's got some very juicy level up <laughs> I, will, I will say the strength ups are, are very juicy the strength ups if are very, very he juicy but he ruined them, them. By taking yes, Mighty Blow instead of Frenzy. Nah, Frenzy's coming. Eh, no. Frenzy's coming. I frenzy, mean, I, his, team is, his team is lacking Frenzy, but I don't like it. I'm sorry, right? If you've got Strength 4 and and Frenzy, you just go, Hey, sure. you're yeah, sideline yeah. Cajun, and now you're greeting the crowd. I mean, they sideline Cajun, I just leap in and punch them. Yeah, but okay, so they do the whole not quite sideline Cajun, but Cajun near the sidelines, and you still a yeah, I still leap in. I still leap in and punch them. <sighs> I, I feel like you should have some frenzy somewhere. It's coming. It's coming. I mean, you're 1890. There's only so much coming you can do before you hit I, I'm, up and ask you to die. I'm 1890 until like an M N until an M N G like until the uh, until the uh, Yamoshi comes back. In which case, then it's back to 2K something or other. Right, but can you, with all of your leaping, beat a guy who whose Tomb Guardians do not understand what Ag1 means? Yeah, of course. Um, I feel like those Tomb Guardians have seen better days. I feel like it was never the Tomb Guardians that made Haringzod's team incredible. It was the fact that the Tomb Guardians were undeveloped and still rolled sixes. <laughs> uh, Haringzod, tell us about your team. They're kind of a weird bunch, but I like them. Is it, is, I know the feeling you're going through right now. As someone who made it to playoffs last time for the first time and was like, I'm going to be playing here, not just casting. Mm, it's, right. a, it's a weird one, isn't it? And Crusader's uh -huh. doing the same thing. You guys are like doing what I did last season, where it's like, this is a bit. Just don't do what I did last season. What? Right, Go. so... <laughs> I, my, I have two major problems with this team. Um, because the Blitterars are incredibly good. They are so nice. Uh, so they are not the problem. I mean, one um, of them is literally from the Gengar school of, of Blitterars, right? Hmm. Um, but the the two major problems I have, firstly, is the if for anyone who watches my the YouTube series of the games, uh, they'll know about the first rule of throw rars, which is the first hit a throw rar takes is always a KO, just regardless of the situation. So right? why do so you like to make sure? Hit. Well, you got to well when you got maniacs leaping around looking like Russians, it's going to be a problem, right? <laughs> I, um... Problem number two is the Tomb Guardians will not cause anything to save their lives. Except when they do. Right, so, two stories. I've lost two Tomb Guardians to death this season. Um, the first of which was surfed by a high elf team. Um, because I had to put him in a position where he might be surfed if the guy was willing to throw uphill dice at the problem. But by doing so, it basically wouldn't be the game because it locked down the position I needed on the pitch. So, of course, he surfed him and he died. Um, but I did win the game. So that was one mighty blow Tomb Guardian gone. I then got a new one and spent the entire season trying to level either that Tomb Guardian or Billy Ray Osiris, who you can see there is on four out of six SVP and has been for uh, the eternity of time. <laughs> um, so in the second to last game that I actually played, week 10, I managed to level... The Tomb Guardian. Happy days, right? So against Pyro in week 11, his strength 7 tree, the the big Juan, uh, he both downs and the tree dies. And my Tomb Guardian dies. <laughs> That's and amazing. The Apo saves the tree, but of course Regen doesn't save the Tomb Guardian. So now it's dead, and now I've got another one who's called Juanubis. Manubis Fangio, just to give you an awkward <laughs> time. That's a great one. Now, I Cthulhu Collector asks a very relevant question: as to who would I end up casting this game? The answer would be me. I demand casting rights to this game. But I also think it'd be quite funny if we could have a different 
uh, video where they're both in voice chat just screaming abuse at each other while they're playing. Um, well, I do record the games for YouTube, and I think I'll be doing the same for the playoffs. So if, if Crusader wants to do that, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's worth it, though. I'm not locked in. I still need one game to go my way. Yeah, but we're, we're quietly confident, and I don't think we should spend that much time addressing that issue, because, frankly, we all want to see Crusader versus Haringzord. The question I have to put entirely to Superfed, because you two are biased as all hell, who wins, Superfed? Oh, the hardest question of the day. Is no, a 6-plus harder than a 3-plus? Well, <laughs> the answer is yes. The 3-plus is not. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. This is this is long. I do think uh, you're not getting any inducements on the kids' love. The Kimry aren't going to do anything with inducements. Maybe a bribe. Uh, I think the kids' love could get their first playoff win against Kimry. So do I. If, if it's uh, you know reluctantly, uh, 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 you see, I've got one secret weapon, right? I'm going to predict Crusader to win. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the Herring Zord curse. <laughs> He's going to turn the full power of the Eye of Herring Zord onto Crusader and expect well, a Crusader victory. Then we're all victory. in agreement. That Your move, son. Win. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess Rebel wins, ultimately, because it's going to be entertaining, right? right? Look, I mean, like, if... I, I've what's, said if I miss, fun is he can't God get damn out it. Of Stop talking and ruining my segues. I had a perfect segue because the next one I was about to say was what else is entertaining is a man who doesn't ever stop scoring touchdowns ever, 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 and you can't make him no 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 no. Um Is it where are you from at the moment, Marker? He's three. in Div three. Div three. At least Crusader can't get out of going to Div 1 this season. Oh, yeah. You can't oh, I, could always re I could always re-roll. So Haringzord could destroy his entire team. There's not a lot left on this team, is there, Crusader? No, uh, Haring... Sorry, Haringzord. Uh, Morka had two movement seven catches that he just let die, basically. I think one took a... One was Niggle and then took an edgy bust. One took a movement uh, an uh, armor bust, but uh, I believe he was saying at the beginning, like, that's okay. He'll sacrifice those players. Um, this is a man who wanted to score 40 touchdowns in the season and did that with a game to spare. I think he got to 45, maybe 44 at the end of it all. Um, but yeah, it, if there's a chance for Morgan to score, he takes it. This man I, doesn't know how to score. I, I think Haring's all put it best in, again, in the Nufflies. He basically stated that what Morgan does at the start of a game is rolls a D6 and that's how many touchdowns he gets. Uh, except for that one time where he won 7-3. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which was an entertaining game nonetheless. But yeah, Morka's had a fabulous season, um, and he's played against some fairly aggressive teams in Div 3 as well. Like, he's had to go through two Nurgle teams, some Dwarves and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, he, there's experience there. This man knows how to play Wood Elves. Um, and yeah, it, go, go, go. Score, score, score. And he's got some really nice players as well, to be fair. Like, he really does. He, he really does. Michael Jackson's been a star. Fred Astaire's been great. The war dancers have, you know, done war dancery things, but um, he is missing players, but I don't think that'll worry him too much. Yeah, but Steve, it's weighted. <laughs> it's a weighted D6 is, the, is his trick. I never said it was mm -hmm. a normal D6. His opponent, <laughs> uh, Haringzod, is his opponent who we expect his opponent to be? Because I know Marker said he was paying very close attention to it. But him. I'm currently watching the game between Toast Guy and Stickers, actually. And how's it going um, for him? It doesn't look like Toast Guy is going to win. Who's which that? might open the door for Pete. Really? What division's that? Mm. It's uh, it's one of the Swiss ones. It's the... It's 8D? 8D. I didn't know you made a, a cousin division to 10B where you stacked all the rerolls. <laughs> <laughs> stacked all the people we could rely on to turn yeah, up no, Swiss. Yeah, no, yeah, we did that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Marzam, does Marker go full in Aryan or does an Aryan go full Marker? Will we just. We don't like to compare the two, we just like to say Marker is Rebels and Aryan. Because that way we're not trying to I say one's think, better than the other. I don't even think that's a, a fair description. Like, uh, Marker is just Marker. Um, Toast Guy is now 2 1 down in his match. So, 
Yeah, but has five turns to equalise. And apparently a tie put him through. So with five turns in the ball, who's he playing? Oh, he's playing stick as. Is a tie good enough for him, is it? A tie is apparently good enough for Cotton Marker, and I would tend to believe him. Yeah, because oh, he, yeah, yeah. he wants to know who he's playing, right? So... Yeah, so he's three... Let me have a look at the, the situation on the field. So, yeah, he's still got a full team. The Chaos Dwarfs are down to eight players. No, nine players. It seems likely enough that... Um, that we'll get a Toast Guy equaliser. Though he is down to one reroll. I think he'll do it. I think he can do it. But looking at the team, I also think he can have a chance against Marker as well. Yeah, but Toast Guy's a very good coach. Well, he's also got um, a fair amount of tackle. Some of it's attached to Panning or Mighty Blow. He's got three dirty players. He just needs to find a way to stem the tide of touchdowns, doesn't he? Yeah. What do you, do you think he can do at Hangzard? Of course he can do it. Um, I mean, Toast Guy's not going to not gonna kind of fall for the whole rabbit in the headlights, it's my first time in playoffs, because it isn't anymore, right? No, he's been at the quarterfinals and got a hype video before, so he knows what he's doing, and he's only lost one game all season. So, and that's no draws either. It's about to be, I think he's about to get the most point. If he can get a tie here, this would be one draw. So 34 points. I think it will be the joint most of anyone in Rebel this season. I mean, Morka's currently sitting on 34 with 11-1-1 yeah. and one as well. So they would actually have identical records and be facing mm -hmm. each other. So that would be fun. I um, mean, you know what you, you know what I think? I, I, I think with an army of elves that Morka doesn't care about in the form of loners, uh, there's plenty to screen with. There's plenty just to keep throwing at, uh, at uh, what is it, this undead team? It's an undead team, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Toast Guy will be praying for snakes by turn four. So, <laughs> does that mean that you're expecting it to go Markerwoods Superfed? Yes. Okay, that's fair. That's very fair. Moving on, we have someone who kind of came in at the very, very last second um, as me and Harry's order building the divs and went, uh, are you got a spot for me? And we were like, well, actually, we do. Uh, he really helped us out, didn't he, Zod? Did Mr. Mm. Arnaud. And he's been to playoffs before as well. He didn't do very well last time. Uh, from memory. Yes, we chilling. Uh, from, I believe it's Div 5 is where he ended up. He, he yes. ended up playing against Tribu Urbana, didn't he? I remember that. In the playoffs before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he got a little out-elfed. Um, but this Dark Elf team uh, did very well. They they did take some losses along the way, but they are looking pretty strong at uh, are they actual TV seventeen seventy. Um, so not quite to Andy Davo levels of extremeness, but they've got a few more stats. Uh, specifically, movement ups. Three movement eight dark elves is not something you see every day. Um, add you five with tackle as well on a, a blitzer. Um, that's actually a pretty good cage dive threat. Um, and a couple guard as well. So it's a this very, is, very solid team. And it is something that sticks out is it's rapid for a Dark Elf team, isn't it? Yeah, it's it Dark Elves that can play a High Elf game. It's kind of it's got a lot of hustle. Now his opponent coming out of G-Man is this is this correct, Zod? I believe it is. Wayne it's Farad? not going to be Wayne Farad, no. Oh, okay. Because uh, the Wood Elves have a bye week. Which div is this? Division 4. And the Chaos Dwarfs also have a bye week. So who's it going to? So it's going to the Chaos Dwarfs on touchdown difference. Really? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. More Chaos Dwarfs. Yay, what we didn't need was more Chaos Dwarfs. So, but it's interesting though, because it's Ramhard. Now, he is the one minus coach we threw in that division of really good coaches. <clears throat> And he's qualified. Which is quite a thing. I think that's very impressive, actually. I think so, too. It's a nice really? team as well. I like the build of, you know, guard, might blow, stand firm. Get you... <laughs> it's a really good build for Chaos Dwarves. It is, yeah. It's, it's, it's... As in none of them are dead. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's what I'm saying. Compared to some of the Chaos Dwarves teams we've seen who've Always had that like one dead chaff blocker kicking around. 
This is an interesting one. He's got a guy called called Don't Play Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> um, okay. It's, it's interesting <laughs> to see he didn't take his advice there. Only one claw, but it does have jump up as well as piling on. So that's quite strong. Very dead bull centaur there. And then a, a really good one. An interesting one, in that it's kind of the carrier and the sacker. Why would you go strip all over, like, sure hands or tackle? I, like, the carrier and the sacker? I don't know. Who's going to win I this I, too, one? like to live dangerously. Who, who's going to win this one, Harringsword? Hmm. I mean, there's a lot of mighty blow there for getting rid of elves, if they can catch them. This is going to be a lot like the other Chore versus Dark Elf matchup we talked about before, but um, I, I don't I don't know enough about Ramhard to really say what his player skills like or I'm, coach skill, uh, but I know C. Arnold is a good coach. Yeah, um, that, that's the only reason that I'm hesitant about, because obviously Ramhard's come through this very tough division. So normally I'd just be going, yeah, let's back him. But, but did he just that... plow through him because he's got 36 Cavs? And a Possibly. plus minus Kaz of 20? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. There was a lot of lizards in there for those chorps to deal with. Um, and a few chaos teams as well. So, yeah, every chance that he's actually just plowed through them. Mm, I'd, I'd back him tentatively. Wait, is Sedge, is Sedge Boy in chat, Ramhard? He is, uh, apparently. Because he just said Strip Ball has won me many games. Well, maybe uh, that's not Ramhard. Maybe that's just somebody else saying that they like Strip Ball. I, I I don't know. I, I, it's when people have different names in different places, it confuses the pants out of me. But who's going to win, gentlemen? I'm going to say Dark Elves. I think C. Arnold's going to show up. Herring's odd? Uh, I think... I think the Dark Elves will win, but they'll be banged up enough that they won't go any further than the round of 32. I think that's fair. When Morka gets to hold them. They will pay a toll. Uh, Crusader? Is the... Yeah. It's a hard one. I'm going to back the Dark Elves just with the speed, but uh, it will not surprise me if they get caught and then just ground into paste. Fair. One of them are in agreement. Sorry, Sedge Boy. We're not, we're not feeling it for you tonight. Uh, we're going to the second last big old representative... We were not the coaches, to be fair. We're in the very bottom corner now. Uh, the second last big old representative, it is Dees, who is... Is this locked, Crusader? No, if Dees... Dees and Jape are both in the running to take first spot. They okay, yeah, but he's locked for playoffs, so we, we've lost He's locked for playoffs. They're in a score-off. They've both got identical touchdown difference. So if they yeah. both win, then Papa Nasty takes the spot? Uh, if they both draw... Then they all have identical records. Eight, if, two, three, touchdown difference of ten. If they all draw, we throw them in a room with a broken uh, pool cue and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know what happens if they all draw. Oh. Bashing on that one. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> if they all draw, it's just going to... Yeah, exactly right. And I'm pretty sure... I can't remember if Jake beat Papa Nasty or not. I'm going to look through the results. Crusader, mm. right? This is a team that got mullered. <laughs> in, this in... is the... In the nicest way to put it, Arnon and Dees literally took a chunk out of each other. Oh, it was such a... like. It, it was one of the best games I've ever seen, but it was yeah, when, costly. Yeah, when you when you ask for a playoff, like a, a final, uh, and you know you look at Arnon and, and Dees, you couldn't have asked for much of a better game. Um, but, but this is a team that's gone from like 2,000 plus TV down to like... 1800 then back up to 2110. I've um, not looked at this team and it is looking good. Man, uh, like, team that, that had Yeti. so many chunks ripped out of it. Well, I mean, uh, it's affectionately. Movement Bust and Big O has affectionately been called the D's lately. <laughs> <laughs> He's picked up so many of them. Uh, whereas previously he picked up a bunch of movement busts and a bunch of strength uh, ups. He's managed to pick up, you know, his fair share of agility this time around. But uh, like Snowballer is probably one of my favorite big guys going around at the moment. I love um, the tackle pick. I love the tackle. Oh, pick. it's so, it's so good. You should have seen Snowballer make a cheeky dodge and a GFI to get a blitz. It was amazing. Uh, Eric yeah. the Red still still running. 
I love Eric the Red after that time he tried to dodge through about six tackle zones to one dice <laughs> the ball, made it, and then sculled the thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jesus had a cracking time with these Norse players. So, on the subject of the head to head, by the way, um, Bash Inc. have the head to head on Drakars, but Drakars have the head to head on Jape. And then Bash Inc. and Jape drew. So. Shrug. Drakars are the worst <laughs> off of the three. So I guess we'll die. Um, anyway, it's it's nice to see them coming back. It really is. Um, yeah. And their opponent. I love this thing. I think he's feeling a little bit upset about being their opponent. We're going to swing back <laughs> to G Man for the second last G Man coach of the night. Uh, I don't know where he plays. In fact, I think I do. 8F. 8F. And he finally made it. He's, you know what? I think me and Donkey Dragon have been playing in Rebel for the same amount of time. Since season three. And we've this is the first time he's made it and the first time I've made it. No, we can, Donkey, because it, it ever played there, so it can be found. Um... He's got some nice level ups. He also got thirty four points this season with the eleven one one record, which seems to be the best record anyone's gonna get this season. Yeah, we're still um, not getting that magic thirteen zero zero. It's tough to do. It is tough to do. So the Dark Angels of Lilith, who are named after the cursed angels of Lilith team. Would you believe they could ever make the playoffs? It looks well, good. It looks pretty good for a one season dark elf team. Not bad, is it? Uh, Darth Darkwing Duck is pretty good. Uh, whack, uh, racking up the casualties, I should be saying. The one thing it doesn't really have for a Dark Elf team that we've seen on a lot of Dark Elf teams so far is there's only three Blodge, which feels mm -hmm. not enough. Yeah, there's not a lot of dodge on the team, which is a good point. Um, so who wins? Not that they would do much against this tackle, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the Yeti has tackle, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm scared for Donkey Dragon. Maybe it's better to not have dodge, because there's so much tackle on Deez's team that it would just be a waste it's, of skill anyway. Honestly, I think it comes down to how well he uses inducements. If he mm. is able to capitalize on a really strong wizard and make the Norse play on the back foot. We always talk about the Norse being an up-tempo team that has to set the pace. If these Dark Elves do get them off their groove, steal the ball, go up 2-0 by turn 6, I don't know. Well, I mean, I think they do get the upset, but that's nah. more unlikely than not. Um, D D you don't remember D's beat Jape. I know. I know. He didn't, well, he didn't, he didn't just beat It was like 4-0, I saw, yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I, I, uh, my money's on D's. I'm just saying there's a way. Donkey Dragon it, is a very good donkey. You can. Well, I know Donkey's oh, in the chat. No, 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 I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. I don't use a wizard, though, because D's is renowned for being immune to lightning bolts. No, no, it's I think I think it did crazy. Crazy. As someone that used a wizard against him <laughs> in a playoff game. And it didn't do a damn thing. <laughs> I don't know. Didn't I thought? That, no, we discussed this, right? All of his dudes are oiled up. You don't use the lightning bolt. You use the fireball. The fireball. Yeah, exactly right. yeah the, the lightning bolt. All those, it's all those rubber, beard oils are quite. Flammable. Remember when he forgot to pick up the ball after I used a lightning bolt on him? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, very quick update, man. by the way. If Shadora is still knocking around, um, it's one-one between that Brett team. That is trying to take that playoff place off him, um, and the Wood Elf team, who they're facing, and both teams have five re rolls, oh, and it's what? turn eleven. What? Who's got the Who's ball? Got the, ball? <laughs> uh, the Bretts have the ball and a wizard in their pocket as well. Oh, oh the Bretts yes. are coming to playoffs. Also, Mighty Zog's on the field. It's happening, uh, Super Fed. It's happening. Right. Yes. Right. Who? So are we saying D's? Are we saying Donkey? We love you, but it's D's. We're saying yeah. D's. We're saying D's. Yes. Okay. Right. Harringsod, you're not the only Kemry coach going to, uh, to to playoffs this season. Well, not while McMackie's around. Yeah, McMackie took a season off, but finally McMackie has come back to Rebel, and he has come back to Rebel playoffs, and he will be blessing every Kemry's past ice. So make some. Well, he might not be if the Nurgle team. Overhauling. Oh, shush, shush. 
I feel like we need the Halo music for him. Where's he from? Five. <laughs> like we just need chanting monks. And he's asking the all important question, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Your past dice will be blessed if he makes it to playoffs. Is all I'm saying, Harry Zod. So make some past players against Crusader. It'll be fine. I have plans. Don't worry. Um, no, nah, the... McMackey's going to be the, first, the only key, uh, camera coach going in the next round. Hey, 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 uh, Harry Zod. Look, he's, he's got Tomb Guardians with skills. Yeah, that's overrated. It's just bloat. <laughs> <laughs> And also he's got throwers that refuse to roll anything other than normals. I do have the Agi 3. Tell me, tell me, Mr. Superfed, about this team. Uh, yes, McMackey's Camry. Uh, they've got uh, a couple well-developed Blitz Raws with Palm and Tackle. One's got Jugs, one's got Grab. I like the ver uh, variety there. Maybe a Frenzy one in the future. Um, Tomb Guardians, couple developed ones, couple not developed ones. One was Niggled with Guard. Um, so there's a little bit of an opportunity there. Uh, the skeletons are pretty trim. There is a rackle kicker. I like that. And, uh, you know, your standard throw raw with uh, leader, kickoff return, and fend. The one thing, right, that was a staple of McMackey's line of play was that he has a massive bench and a ton of dirty player. He's still got a big bench, but he seems to have lost a lot of the dirty player. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a very trim team at 1650. Uh, he might be picking up some inducements, um, which a dirty player skeleton isn't very expensive. Um, and you just need one dirty player with a couple bribes as well. Now this this team has to take on, and I'm, I'm apologies if it's not correct, but it's actually we talked about Michaels earlier, and in my mind, Barmushin is very much Michaels as running mate. If it, if we were talking like from a presidential point of view, they both play in awful together and uh they're both playing and they play game. awful together and they play hey, 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 hey. that was good i enjoyed that <laughs> so tell us all about barmushin starting from where he's from having his own. uh so he narrowly lost out to the vampires um it was it'd be interesting there's been a little bit of needle between barmushin and random guy this season nice little rivalry building up there um only one point between them in the end, but what this team does not have is a mighty blow werewolf. Um, but it hasn't stopped them. I mean, it, it like hasn't Michaels. seemed to have needed it. No, they've they've got the white, their limp wrist, who very much does that role in the team. Also, just like Michaels, I would know the zero dirty yeah. player. Yeah, no, they. This isn't they helping me. Breed. This isn't helping my mental image of Barmushin and Michaels being the same person. <laughs> now, there's one very nice flesh golem. Have you ever seen them in the same place at the same time? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so we've got Dentures, the Flash Golem. Um, and also, look out for Rotto, who's a block, tackle, guard, zombie. That's pretty is, good. That's quite a lot nah, of a zombie. Doesn't, doesn't have frenzies, shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, I there like, you go. I so, like Limprist. Limprist is a solid white. Uh, jump yeah, up he's making after up for pump. the lack of um, useful werewolves, I suppose. Dentures, very much from the school of hindered dejection as well. Mm. And of course, he does only have one good flesh golem, but he hasn't really needed to pay the tax because his werewolves are kind of eh. So, yeah. well, he's paid the tax on one of them, which I think yeah, I feel actually, like he, he paid a big tax. He, if anything, he's due a rebate. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> I feel like he's doing a rebate from these werewolves. They're, they're not very good. And... Yes, that's why I didn't think you needed to pay the tax, but, you know, better that he does than doesn't. Barky high pitch, close to leveling. <laughs> Maybe he'll get the mighty blow here. I mean, F Fleefa has a level. We don't know what it is. It oh, could be mighty okay. blow. But I feel probably, like... It's probably dirty player. He's I feel like it. if it was mighty blow, you'd just take it because it's obvious, right? You'd just take it. Who wins? Maybe it's yeah. mind games. Does McMahon's past no. ice beat? No. <laughs> you, you don't take it. You ignore it and take block. If you didn't block. <laughs> yeah. Does McMahon's past ice be beat Barmushin's ability to be the exact same person as um, a very successful Michael's. role coach? I'm, I'm going to say no. McMackey is a veteran coach in many, many ways. Uh, very experienced and... His Kimri are just solid. Like, 
Parizod, he, he, he would have to fail to pick up the ball. Lose this right, ball. this is a very tough one for me. Because on the one hand, G-Man, but on the other hand, Kemri Master Race. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm. what I will say is that this season, obviously, I was playing Kemri, and there was three Necro teams in the division. Um, Necro against Kemri is not a good matchup for the Necro. Especially if they don't have Mighty Blow on the Wolves. Okay. So I I would make McMackie the favourite, but Barmushin obviously has a chance. But I don't think it's a good matchup for Necro playing Kemri, especially when, as we've seen, the um, the Kemri are full of guard tomb guardians. Do you want to help Some out of... here, uh, Crusader, and just give yourself an opinion? I'm looking at both teams, and I th I think my gut feeling is that the Kemri should take this. They've got guard. Uh, there's a distinct is... lack of mighty blow from the Necro. I I'm going to back the Kemri game. Who was that Necro versus Kemri game last season where the werewolf got pinned against the sideline and had to do the red dice into 4+, plus, 4+, plus, 3+, plus, and GFIs? It probably, probably involved Gengar if it was last season. Yeah, I think it was. Maybe it was two seasons. I remember. I remember doing a play of the game of that. I think it was uh, Gengar. Sam, what, what I tend to find in that matchup is that the flesh golems sort of end up a little bit useless because Tomb Guardians are just better at that job. They just get bullied by the, the, the Tomb Guardians because there's more of them. Yeah. And then obviously the Blitz Riles can just go and pick off everything else. And it, it's tough. It'll be a tough game for Barmush in this. Yeah, I, I think Barmush has a chance. Like it'll, It's a winnable game. But uh, I think McMackie, as you say, is going to walk into this one as the favorite. And I would back him to win. Okay, fair enough. That's our last G-Man coach of the night. And on that note, we're moving to our last big O coach of the night. And it's a coach... I'm not... Is he still in this position? Is he blocked? Yeah, no, T Tomo can't do any worse than second place, so he's definitely in this position. Is it he two, can. Three? If Lynx wins, Tomo goes well, to uh, faces me. Nah, I'm banking on the loss there. So, yeah, to I, I, I think Tomo would pretty much end up here anyway. But, uh, yeah, Div 2, uh, the Arcana, Tomo's team, uh, Pro Elves, never remember which Elves they are, um, I think they started the season at like 1,200 TV and then did well and then got smacked around and then have now gone back to 1640. Um, Tomo's last three games he had to play, I believe, were my, uh, was it myself, Warecaster, no, sorry, Warecaster, Effie, and then Darkness, the Nurgle team. Mm -hmm. um, he, he played Warecaster after I removed, I think, two or three players from his roster. Or for that game at least, where Caster removed another one or two, and then against the Dwarves, he played the game of his life. And like for anyone who's familiar with the Dwarves in Big O Div Two, they're a scary looking team. The Dwarves in Big O uh, Div Two, I believe the term I... is cancer. The Dwarves yeah. in Big O Div Two, yeah. I have I have tagged that as how do you lose with this team? And yet they lose. <laughs> and yeah, I think he won that game two uh, four two. Um, so he played an absolute blinder there. Against Darkness, he played very well, um, and yeah, he's just had a he's had a great season and a very very strong finish and very very much deserving of his playoff spot. I mean, Tomo is a very good elf coach. Um, yeah, he is. He, he absolutely he's a phenomenal elf coach. Would you say he gets tilted? <laughs> um, I'd say I, I he gets stomped in the a... dirt in playoffs. Did you not remember what one thirty did to him? That was yeah, that was bad. And I'm just... that was when he, that was his dark elves, right? I know, but he's, yeah. uh, just to say, and he's against, uh, and it's, you know. So what we're saying is, he he has a tendency of getting stomped in the dirt in playoffs, and it's not like he's against a bash. Oh, it looks like Nurgle. That's where I was going. Uh, he's going to be playing against the rotting snatches, which are in Div Seven, unless we already mentioned this. Cake and Grad and him play, and Cake and Grad could take the spot, but. Uh, the Rotting Snatches are a Nurgle team that uh, took some losses, but are still, even with the losses, basically 2K TV. They've got some extra cash in the bank. We'll call them 1950. Um, 
And like uh, I mentioned earlier, comparing Stauticus's team to this team, this team's only two seasons old. Uh, they have hyper developed their players. Um, we've got a strength five Nurgle warrior with mighty blow and claw and block. Uh, Beast of Nurgle, stand firm, guard, standard. There's a diving tackle block Nurgle warrior, um, which if he gets on those pro elves is going to be a pain in the butt. Um, Pestigore, ball carrier with movement up and agi up and sure hands and tackle. That's niggled. Hang on, I just want to say, Tomo, I wasn't throwing shade at you for winning or losing. I was just throwing shade in that the last... I was just mentioning that the last time you'd been to playoffs you kind of got stomped into the dirt. It was not your fault, but it was still the most notable thing about that game. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, if you're playing for the pitch clear, this team plays for the pitch clear. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? They foul a lot. Uh, ask anyone that's played uh, against his undead team, where they fouled, I think, uh, 15 turns in one match. Um so, yeah, they... <laughs> only 15 what happened on turn 16 only 15 was, did they run out of play ball they had to walk in the touchdown <laughs> um so yeah th this is a nurgle team that uh it doesn't have a whole which i would say is probably the one weakness against the pro elf team but it's really going to come down to more positioning and disturbing presence i think uh the way pro elves tend to play i i personally looking at the two teams i personally think Darkness had a team that was better suited to deal with Tomo's elves, and Tomo just ran circles around him. I, I think the problem is Nurgle are difficult to handle with any elves because Disturbing Presence is a problem if you're trying to play the pass play, right? Yeah, but Tomo won't play the passing play against Disturbing Presence. I mean, you still need to put the ball in someone's hand, right? At some point. You do. You Unless do. you're running all the way, and running all the way can still be difficult. I'm not saying it's not. I mean, he's got an agility five elf though, so disturbing presence. Like, if the ball's in one disturbing presence zone, it's like yeah, whatever. Two, you sort of go, eh, sure. Like, I, I, I personally think the dark uh, darkness had a team which was better suited Wait, to dealing with elves. Does nerves of steel cancel disturbing presence? I've never, no. I've never played no, a against nerves, nerves of steel. Nerves of steel doesn't no. Um, I wasn't sure. But, I've never but agility, agility five game. effectively agility five effectively cancels out one disturbing presence zone, <laughs> effectively. But yeah, I, I think I think darkness had a Nurgle team which was better suited to dealing with elves. And well, let said, me ask Tomo, you this, because you're talking five. a lot about the offensive side of the ball. How does this pro elf team do anything to stop a two one grind from the Nurgle? Wizards. Yeah, I mean, Tomo's going to get 360 TV or thereabouts. The alternative is the overtime play as well. They they score late in the first half and they somehow won, won it. Um, yeah. And win the toss. I can tell who Tomo... you two are voting for. Haring Zod, you're going to have to break this tie. Back Tomo. That's interesting. Hmm. Especially because I've got the numbers in front of me and you're not going to believe how close we end up. Uh, I've been tallying our predictions as I did last time and then Crusader got yelled at. Well, actually, no. Crusader never got yelled at. I got yelled at because apparently it's the host's fault that he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. But anyway... You, had, you brought him in. We have... In, in the tradition of every other... Well, he was the only Aussie I expected to be awake. Um... In the tradition of, of uh, this so far, we've left one team to the end, and it is a bye week, the very last team we look at. And it's 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 a thing. It's happened, ladies and gentlemen. This has happened. Like, the bridesmaid has become the bride. And I'm going to leave it to Superfed to tell us any more. This is a team that has killed legends, right? Literally. Literally killed legends. It is Animal Farm. And they are coached by Sace, and he finally broke the curse. <laughs> Never being able to make the playoffs, always being one short. He broke it in a big way, just like Arch. Arch coming up to row one. Um, so it uh, is a season for many people to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, this team is disgusting. Very slow for chaos. They've gotten a, a few movement busts along the way. Um, but 
still at 2200 TV uh, when this MNG comes back. The hobble, uh, they're hobbling their way into the playoffs, aren't they? <laughs> they really are. Agi 2 jump up is always fun. Um, <laughs> I mean, strength 5, but see, it I, does work. I've got to interrupt you again because I am throwing shade about their speed, but at the same time I play Nurgle. And uh, that's about as fast as we ever get on our Warriors. And we, we make right. it work, right? Yep. Yep. And if you're not afraid to throw a GFI or two, uh, Movement 4 is not that scary. And uh, the Beastman, uh, Moses, Claw Palm with Juggernaut and Tackle. There's very few teams that this team can't tear apart. However, during the regular season, he was exposed to being exploitable, we'll say, by Elves. So should Tama win the prior round, um, that would probably be Sace's worst nightmare. But Sace has already said the fact that he made the playoffs, it's his best season in his mind. So if he doesn't go any further, he doesn't care. I mean, what I like about this Chaos team is it does have a lot of tackle. He's got a lot of tackle, right? Mm -hmm. He's also, look at that Crusader. He got strength up and then put Frenzy on it. Ooh, who saw that coming? <laughs> um, actually, you know, it's it's got tools for every occasion it's got several can openers it's got a ton of tackle it's got a ton of guard it's got some stand firm coming through finally you know this is it's 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 a very it's a tool belt right it's a utility belt it's got a bit of everything playing this team is just a race against time if you don't get a bunch of early casualties against you early you're going to be in good shape um but eventually they will come around there's no way to avoid it and when they do, it's going to hurt. Israel happy that yes. this is their flagship team uh, this season? I think... Absolutely. What do what the rest of... Okay, Haring's odd. Obviously, he's playing the bye, so I don't need to know if he's going to win because he's already won. But uh, what do you think of this team? Um, if they come up against any legends, they'll kill one of them. <laughs> That's kind of their thing. Is he not getting to the point, though, with three legends himself? It's uh, it's a there's a risk that he might finally lose one. Possibly, he traded one away. <laughs> Look, Sace's game is he wins through casualties, right? So well, I guess much like Metal's team struggles from if they put the old pillow claws on, then they have a bad time. Says will have the same problem if he if he suddenly runs out of ways to casualty things or things won't die, then it just becomes a chaos team, which is kind of eh. well, but we more are... often than not things die. Yeah, definitely. We are missing on something that he did trade away. Uh, ball carrier. Uh, there's no sure hands on this team. That's a, that's a that little is, bit scary. That is even more exploitable by elves. So. Uh, if he does get some bad pickup rolls and burns through his re-rolls and then has to deal with whatever block dice come his way, um, it, it's it's beatable. Right. I think we're done. That's the last team to look at. So, And Oof. everyone's... Uh, uh, go back saying, arguably for too long. I mean, talk about 61 teams in under four hours is pretty impressive. Uh, just to confirm, Toast Guy drew, so we'll play Morka. Awesome. And the REL eight game between the Wood Elves and the Care the the Bretts, Bretts, Bretts. is just drama, it's just so much drama. Bretts, <laughs> Bretts, the Bretts. It's still one one. The ball is on the floor. Oh no! Right. No. The We're... Bretts have had to burn the wizard. The wizard killed the catcher who had the ball. Ah. <laughs> uh, it, it's all sorts going on So, here. get out of here and go watch that, gents. There's, there's only about four Wood Elves left on the field. The Bretts now have the ball back in hand. Right. Um, do you want another final count as we've nominated it? Sure. Right. Miners, one. Out of one, so that's 100%. Big O, nine. G-Man, ten. And Rel, twelve to make it to round... To, to make it to the second round. That's very, very close. That's very, very close. If Big O shout at me this time, I just can't make you happy, so piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Take my energy. Oh, energy will be thrown. Energy Take is going to be thrown. Take my energy. Like, 
Are we excited for this season of playoffs? I think I'm excited for the season of playoffs. There's a lot of good games in there, right? It hey, snuck up on us. I mean, you haven't even finished the OI revamp. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah, we have. We just haven't released it for review yet. You haven't even released the OI revamp. Me and me and really? Slice have been putting heads on it, and we, we, we're pretty much there. So no, 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 no. I've done my work, and I also dropped Clan League and a brand new league in the same oh, week. You're talking about Clan. <laughs> Oh, are, you, are, you done, are you done talking about clan now? Okay, good. So, uh, any last minute trash? All right, this is your one minute each, Crusader. Why is Big O gonna win the Super Bowl? He's got the best players. That, Come on, that okay? That was sharp but sweet. Uh, Super Fed. Why are Rel gonna win the Super Bowl? Because we got the best teams. <laughs> Haring Zod. Why is G Man gonna win the Super Bowl? Because we got Bleeding Hippies team. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like I've got no, army no I've got, I've got no a bleeding repeats. hippie <laughs> no repeats his div is looking or his, his bracket is looking pretty good though well anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching uh, guys thank you very much for joining me it's been a lot of fun it was a bit longer than maybe we expected it was about as much as we expected I think to be honest in length. it was 4 hours eh, well that's again 61 teams mm, true but I want to see what happens in this Brett game because the ball is now in the hands of a peasant. <laughs> oh my god. Right. I'm going to go away and watch that. You all should do the same. Thanks for watching, guys. You all stay classy. Wave, you bastards. I was waving first. I know. Harrington and Crusader are point blank refusing to. What? I can't wave. <laughs>